Hello and welcome to the 111th episode of the Destiny Community Podcast. If you saw the go live notification, it said 110 because <laughs> Tefty failed at his job. Everyone point and shame at him. Shame. Shame, shame it up. Shame. Come on. Ring those You're bells. You're not allowed to mess up. Only <laughs> I am. Shame. Shame. Don't you still have shame. the gong? Do you have the gong still? Yeah. It's kind of a bell. Sort of. Was that that was because I was like touching my beard that that stream, right? It was for lots of things that oh, we still don't fully understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I know. You have a bell. We will never tell you. <laughs> we will never That's... tell you what caused the bells. <laughs> um, I thought we had cleared that, that up. Funny. I thought it was because uh there was there a was, bunch of them. There was, uh, there was a bunch. I think they were then just making it up as they went along. Yeah, no? I, I do like to drink, so <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you guys are still making it up. Yeah. Be like, oh yeah. It was the, the, Yo, the time. I got to talk about the biggest news of the week. Destin, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming on again. <laughs> hey, Briar. Yeah, thanks for having me. The biggest news of the week, though, is that Tefty and Holt have made a challenge toward each other. <laughs> what? It's, this is this is this is important. This, this is, is the biggest this is very news. Very important. They now have a bet. I don't know what the what the bet is going to be with the with the. With the I thought it was just a challenge. Wards, a, a challenge, a gentleman head challenge. challenge. Who wins? Who's the better Who'll man? Make a a theme song for uh, Tefty's got to make a theme song for the podcast, and Holtz has got to get a butt tattoo. And the challenge is who does that first, or who does something mm -hmm. first? Yeah. So and who whoever pride is on the line. The, pride. Yeah, exactly. Pride and manly <laughs> stuff. Pride and, and all the important who's things. Who's best boy? Deformation. Who's the best boy? Who's, yes. the best boy? Hmm. Yes. who's a good boy? You're a good boy. <laughs> if you think I'm going to come boy. out on top, you guys should vote Tefty. All right. And if you think Holtz yeah, is going to make it happen, uh, hashtag hashtag Holtz. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Um, I do think that the butt tattoo thing is going to be something that we're going to be unveiling. Okay. For the holiday show. Oh, so the We're time doing limit is on. A present for all of us, really. We are giving <laughs> out the gift that gives to everybody. Our gift Pope, to you will are be. Are you time gating your butt tattoo? I am. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is a time gated reward. It's a dawning it butt tattoo. Well, your it's ass is on the line here, Pope. So you better yeah. get it done. <laughs> dawning on the it's ass. A, it's definitely it's going to be part of our holiday special. We're going to unveil that prize. Surprise package. Yeah. Surprise package. <laughs> Surprise, Surprise package. package. Surprise booty. Uh, yes. We've got a lot of stuff fun planned for that. We, I, I'm really excited. We're going to have uh, Ash on for the first time. And so that's yeah, going to be fun. I'm excited about And uh, Watts is going to, as a theme for our dress up, we're going to follow through with our uh, commitment from the charity stream. Another the commitment cosplay? coming to life. We, mm -hmm. we were required to yeah. cosplay or dress up for a show. So Watts is going to have a theme for us, and we're going to all dress up for the holiday show. Guys, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, <you> <laughs> it's it's you already got your costume completely. and your emote, Tefty. I do? Yeah. Oh, Tef my God. <laughs> that? Tefty's going to be Natsuki. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dude, my God. I, Watts could sit aside who we are going to dress this up This is scary, as, so. guys. I need a, <laughs> I need a lifeline. Uh, can I phone a friend? <laughs> so... I'm, hey Dustin, that, that, yeah. Dustin, how you doing? Hi, Hi Dustin. So I do I do this thing during shows where I try uh, not to cross talk. So if sure. I'm being quiet, uh, I'm just trying to be respectful. You should cross talk. Don't you should do that. Don't do that. I, some people will never talk. It. Some people are like, whatever. Yeah. Dustin, I'll, I'll, I'll chat. I'm going to interrupt Pope as much as I possibly yes. can. Yes. Okay, that's, that works. That works. Well. That <laughs> is. You know, you can take over that role from Briar. So just, okay. just realize that Perfect. if you're quiet, it comes back on us as being assholes because we're like, oh, yes. my God, you're not letting the guests talk at all. And it's like, we yes. tell them they can talk. Just come on in whenever you want to do a conversation, especially when Pope's talking. That would be great. In oh, I, episodes, now, I don't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> I'm going to make you guys look so bad. No, Hell yeah. We've had like a hundred and probably eight guests and seven of them have talked. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's an amazing wait, wait, wait. streak. I think I think somebody said on the Twitter questions you guys were asking, is this your 200th episode? If you it's, if it's, you combine it with the old Planet PD? Destiny podcast, yeah, yeah. Th congratulations, that's freaking awesome. Thank you. That's really cool. Thanks, but I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if I want to early or, celebrate that. 
Or Early hey, is this your 111th like, episode? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. One one one. This is the crazy one one one. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. one, one, we're one. really proud of where we are now, though. Thank you, Dustin. That's this has been like. Um, uh, we could have done better. We could have. I mean, game, let's I, be think, I think early on been we could have more butt picked, tattoos maybe, by now. We could have we could have picked uh, maybe better guests, you know, or better hosts. Mainly, you know, we could <laughs> at least for this week you could have. There could have been a theme song by now for 111 episodes. <laughs> We could have made a music video. Yes. Ooh. As our intro. Not it. We could have done a Coolly lot of things. Walking down the hall. <laughs> Not it. We could have taken. Briar knows how to make uh, p- pictures. So. No, is that, Videos are one snap. step above. I, I got to say. I can draw. I, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was commenting before the show, though, like just talking about how, you know, I moved to my new apartment. I'm just sort of messing around with the new set. But then Pope has his and Briar has an awesome one. And. And Miss 5000 Watts has a great set. And then there's the other guys. <laughs> if you look on stream, <laughs> mine is very clean on stream, right? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. But on the podcast, it looks like you're, you know, no. streaming in from Kermit's garage. <laughs> but, like, but like knowing, being on the earlier shows and watching your earlier shows and seeing where you are today, it's just, it's really, really cool to watch you guys grow as creators. And it's, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it's been fun. GG. It's been a joke. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a it's interesting because we were doing this as like a <laughs> as a side. It, we were kind of forced into it, right? At Planet at Planet Destiny, we were like it was like gun. Got to make a podcast. So actually, gun- no, actually, it wasn't. Gun gun we had to like. Uh, it was Sir Wallen and I, and I just messaged him one day. Well, and I was like, "Hey, Wally and Holtz talk- actually came to my house yeah. with a gun, and I was like, guys, this it's is true. In, this is too much." And then here mm-hmm. I am. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was doing the Dads of Destiny podcast and PD kept on, Planet Destiny kept on DDoSing the podcast <laughs> and said that if I didn't <laughs> join Planet Destiny's <laughs> podcast, that I would never get, get I would be yeah. hit offline every night. You have no problem. That was me, actually. That was just <laughs> Planet Destiny. <laughs> I blamed it on Planet Destiny, but <laughs> confessional, it was me. <laughs> it's the long con, right? And to, yeah. and to think about it, I mean, we've had some we've had some amazing um, guests and like shows, and it's just we have it's been a it's been a crazy um, experience, man. And and it only took us ninety episodes to monetize, you know, to figure yeah. out how Google AdSense works. Yeah, I think the last one I was on, I think you guys had launched your Patreon. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, wow, I think that was the last episode mm. I was on. So, like, congrats that re- on that success. Thank you. That really that really initiated. Um, I, I, I didn't know how strong our fan base, like how many, like the core group of people who watch the show and are participate, that's that Patreon and Twitch group that is just, I don't know, we've been able to, you know, improve the quality and do so much more because of that. And it's been nuts. It's been really been nuts. We have an editor. We have an editor. Yep. What? That's pretty crazy. And an artist. And it's crazy. Prof- it's crazy. It, it used to, well, we've always had an editor. Hi, it was me. The first like a now we have a now. good one. Like a good now one. we have a professional editor. <laughs> one that knows what they're doing and knows how to sync the audio with video. It doesn't get butt hurt about when we start. One, two, three. Clap. All those things. <laughs> that was the best part of the podcast. Was yes. One, two, three. I remember. And still there would be desync issues. <laughs> still problems arose. Regardless, you guys are great. I'm really stoked to be here. I love your community. I love being uh, able to come on your show once in a while. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming Thanks, on. Thanks, Justin. Justin. Awesome. Wait, wait, wait. I got to be honest with you. Um, I tried to get Fran, but he said he was busy. <laughs> cool. Yeah, All right. Well, he had, I got to go. <laughs> he had a hair emergency. So <laughs> he said he's had as a hair As long as you never have CJ, I'll be good. <laughs> Oh, he's coming out. <laughs> for sure. After you just said that, that's that's. For oh, sure. wait, wait, wait. If you okay, what if you have mom, but all his kids have to be there too? He has three kids, three Oof. boys. We we only have room for one guest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's back and steel. <laughs> well, we gotta. Um, so, Destin, you got. I mean, I know a lot of people know where you started, but can you tell us a little bit about how you got started and in? Um, content creation and where you know you're streaming now for yourself your own channel yeah, but you didn't start out that way right uh oh man like if you want to i've been in the industry like 
10 plus years. So if you really want to go all the way back, I started making news videos in my basement and entering user movie contests on GameTrailers.com. So like that was when Monty Oom had created the Haloid short where uh, Master Chief and Sam has fought. Mm -hmm. And he was a big inspiration to create something unique. Like I couldn't do what he could do yet. yet. Well, I still can't do that. Um, and I started doing news and trying to be a little bit humorous. And then I got hired at this website, Screw Attack. Champ knows in chat. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so some people might remember me from that. I did hard news where I would point at the camera. And then eventually I moved to San Francisco. I worked at a, a publisher for a very, very short time short while and then i ended up at ign i've been at ign for seven years now wow. really awesome mm -hmm. That's yeah a and uh the streaming thing i always would just kind of stream but i didn't take it seriously i tried to regularly commit to streams this is sort of like a it's a weird agreement with ign they're like they re recognize fran actually started the program that people like me want to like still be creative outside of the ign voice so i get to stream on my own channel and kind of do my own thing over here and yeah it's cool like no, that's, it. that's cool that like the organization supports that too mm -hmm. it is cool yeah it sucks when an organization you know keeps you from doing the things you want to do and forces you to make content for them and then doesn't pay you well enough to 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 to, to stay with them oh, it awesome. sucks <laughs> sucks when that happens mm. um so we <laughs> <laughs> what possibly could you be referencing <laughs> Uh, anyway, right. so moving moving forward. Um, <laughs> um, so you you're now what what are you gonna what when people tune in what are they gonna get a chance to watch what do you play? I play a lot of Destiny, a lot of Destiny <clears throat> Two Forsaken games. I'm enjoying. I played Red Dead, but I didn't stream it. It's been difficult. I just moved from Walnut Creek to San Francisco. So that's a pretty big move in the Bay Area, if you're familiar with the space. So I'm set up now. I just did this literally last night, like got this sort of little space. And so I you tripled your rent. Regularly. Cool. Yeah, ba basically. I went <laughs> I from, mean... um, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's pricey. Uh, I actually moved it in is. with my girlfriend. So oh, congratulations. Wow. Nice. It's kind of taking the relationship yeah. to the next level. So it's a good, it's a good move, you know? There and you go. I, I'm really, really happy. I lucked out. She's kind of great. <laughs> <laughs> She's into video games. Does she play? Nope. She watches kids for a living, uh, but she loves watching me play and I love watching movies with her. She likes romantic comedies and she cries every movie and it's adorable. <laughs> every single movie. She, she looks after yeah. kids. She probably like she's loves an au pair. Fortnite. Yeah. She probably loves Fortnite. <laughs> Little kids she like, uh, like, she uh, still before probably. they're in a fortnight oh so oh. minecraft yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, or Roblox. okay wait there is two kids that she watches that are into minecraft there is minecraft know. still a thing i thought fortnite yeah. 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 kids love huge. minecraft is it still huge yeah, it's still my, huge my, my kid son doesn't my play but he loves that's minecraft. all he watches my yeah. kids were huge into minecraft but kind of just like Do they transitioned play off of it no i i i don't let him you forbid it I there shall be no Fortnite in this house. <laughs> I would just encourage him to do it more. No, they just didn't get into it. Uh, to, to actually answer your question, uh, I stream a lot of Destiny, usually. I'm really into games like I played PUBG a ton when it was out. Briar, I think I saw you playing it a few times. Yeah, well, I love during that. that period when there was sort of a Destiny uh, low mm -hmm. amount of content, so a lot of us were checking out that. Uh, I play Fortnite once in a while. I'm not that into it. That's my couch game. When I just fire up the Xbox, I'll just play a few rounds of Fortnite, turn it off. Um, yeah, man, it's mostly Have you checked out Blackout in Call of Duty? I did a little bit. I really want to get into it, but I don't know what weapon meta is. So I pick something up and then I die because I'm like, oh, well, that guy clearly had the better thing with a higher rate of fire. So I died. Also, I'm bad at video games, so that doesn't help. <laughs> Factor. <laughs> it's a thing. I understand. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, you might have saw my amazing Gamescom footage at IGN. That was perfect. Oh, that was great. Yeah, you got a little heat from that, didn't you? Everyone was like, why don't you guys let Destin play? This is this is terrible. And I was just like, look, like I just I didn't adjust the mouse settings. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like it's like somebody took the mouse and they cranked it up. Like my mouse here does 1750 DPI. It's like it was at 3000 DPI and I somehow like figured it out. 
<laughs> by the end, well, apparently not. <laughs> but, yeah. That that's one of the things that people don't understand about capture sessions is like mm-hmm. you're often just like you're like okay, you have like two minutes to set up everything you need to record, mm-hmm. and then you're just tossed into the game. And then most of the time, it's like, oh god, this play, this person was playing on inverted. Let's go switch yeah. that. Oh god, they always were inverted. But, but yeah. they don't care. Like the the yeah. community doesn't care. They yeah. don't know. They don't know about the production challenges mm-hmm. that all mm-hmm. of us face when we're about to stream. They just want a good stream, have a good time. And when they get yeah. crappy footage, that's on me. And I, I actually felt bad about that because that's my job at IGN. <laughs> so I was like, look, yeah, okay, it could have been better. I've learned my lesson check the sensitivity settings when you're playing on PC and I'll do better. Forgive yeah. me. The, the, <laughs> I don't know about you. The worst one that I ever had was it was at a, it was for Sparrow racing league. The second time it came back for some reason, the person that was playing before me was on legacy controls. Oh my God. Like mm. inverted so legacy like, controls. Oh inverted <laughs> legacy. And I was like, uh, <laughs> I, what, Legacy controls work as long as you don't think about it. The second you start thinking about what you're trying to do, you're never going to be able to get it to work ever again. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was fine, and then I realized I was uninverted. Then I swapped it back, and then I, I did something, and I didn't win that race at all. <laughs> that was I think I play with Legacy. Is that the one where both left and right sticks um, do like the same thing? You control. Uh. I think movement with left oh. and then looking up and down with uh, the right stick, but then moving left or right on the analog sticks causes you to rotate with what? both of them. Oh, no, yeah. that's not how oh, I Oh, that sounds yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> really weird. That uh, sounds like some dark ages of video games. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, from, it's from when you used to be able to plug two and four controllers in. <laughs> In, in and play Goldeneye using two and sixty four. It's someone's grandpa. Right. Someone's grandpa who is used to that controller mm-hmm. is using Legacy. Oof. Mm-hmm. When we were down at Guardian Con, we did that. Uh, it was like that one v one challenge that was broadcast. No, oh, yeah. And I, I hadn't what? used a controller in <laughs> literally a year. Like I had not yeah. touched a controller in Destiny in a year, and I had to go <laughs> up against, against Fallout plays, and the buttons were mapped weird like i i didn't know what the slide button was and i didn't know i think i didn't know there was another button that was like really integral that i didn't know <laughs> it, was Shoot. Like, it wasn't that bad but it was it was rough that was what happened when i 1v1 um D- D- dylan you know when we did the bungee bounty on mm. them that's what happened with me i don't too. think so Pope. in your own setup at home? <laughs> what are you talking about it was weird it was like nothing oh. was set up right and i would you know I was on controller and then PC, and it was weird. Huh. Mm. Huh. Excuses. I was on PlayStation. Excuses, yeah. Was it? Just, just PlayStation. Watts, yeah. you were, you were in that, weren't you? I was. Yeah. yeah. I remember she, uh, was talking about it because it was like crazy. We, we, we pretty I, much I carried Watts, it. but I mean, it's, it's all right. <laughs> Brian had a really great tether, and that's hard to say. There was a time where Brian had a great tether. <laughs> Shut down a super. <laughs> Never seen it before. It's crazy. You guys are you guys are welcome <laughs> for throwing, by the way. Yeah, you helps. didn't throw. Crap. Where got that checks in the mail? <laughs> oh, I know why I didn't see it. Our panel that was the only panel slot they had for us, so we had the panel when like this epic match was happening. Oh, and you're talking yeah. about the Gambit Guardian Con one. Uh, Guardian Con. The Gam- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we were talking about the fun. one the uh, the Bungie bounty that we were playing against Bungie for. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. It was a bunch of shit talking that happened over Twitter, and Dylan one v one me, and I said I'll one v one you if you if we decide you know that this is finished with us versus you and a bungee bounty. And so we 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 played. He beat me barely by like one kill, you know. By he it was cheated. Close. He cheated. <laughs> like let's be honest. Yeah. And then uh, and then Watts carried us the rest of the way. It was good. That good part was true. Well, um, we have got a nothing to talk about. Nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Let's just. Did you guys it. get the Thunderlord this week? Hell yeah. yeah! Yes, man. I didn't have time. It was really hard, and it took me forever to get through the quest. <laughs> I, I just, just, I really so hate that they're sectors. making. They're making this content for people that are just like, you know, have no life. I it don't takes about five it. minutes. Streamers are I did the entire quest 
in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if you like turn into Engrams to, or if you just buy the Engrams, like, you yeah. know, you have to get them in the wild. It really takes like five to 20 minutes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. What did you think, Destin, about going back to the Cosmodrome? For that uh, it was part? it was awesome. It really, I love nostalgia plays like that. It was yeah. really really fun and getting to see it and remember that. Oh yeah, during Rise of Iron, they introduced snow mm-hmm. in that space, so you were going back to that version. So canonically, it's still there. I, I question why they were like, "Here's a tease. All right, get out of here." Like, yeah, you can't go back to it or anything, see. right? Yeah, you you can't revisit the space. You yeah. can't boot up that mission again unless you do it on an alt or something. Mm. Um, but still, you want to you want to like but, do some patrols, right? Yeah, it was cool to go back, and I. It would be really cool if they brought back Destiny One in the I was D2 surpri- engine or something. I was surprised that they brought us back to the Rise of Iron Cosmodrome as opposed to the vanilla Cosmodrome, where well, uh, the Rise of Iron, right? What's it's that? Canon, canon. It, like it, that's in what the happened. Story to it. timeline. Rise of Iron, it's still like a frost over that's the whole true. space. Yeah, that's true. So it wouldn't make any sense if you go back and it's all grassy. Yeah, and there's no hole in the sure wall, you know. Around it, but that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, take it that, gave... Briar. This <laughs> jeez, Briar, not respecting the storyline. God, respect the lore. Uh, it gave me the, all, uh... all kinds of like nostalgia. I just I loved going back there, hearing the music, and seeing the plays, even. You know, I I picked apart the texture maps. I'm like, well, these texture maps are good, but not as good as some of the ones that are in D2 now. And mm-hmm. it just it, it it made me want to play D1, but with delicious 240 frames per second. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> you get to see what D1 would kind of look like on PC, which yeah. is also a really cool thing. You get the nostalgia and you also get to see, oh, hey, so this is what D1 areas look like. Yeah. Did you guys do the do you guys do the scannables? Yes, I did the car. Yeah. Really was there's five. like the other one. There's like five. There's a lot, them. yeah. Uh, yeah, I they're, just saw the car. they're like really like specific spots. You have to stand in the snow, and then suddenly it pops up, a little thing. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's really there's, cool. there, it's there's hard to one find them. them. Well, they're they're really interesting. I think they. Um, what do you guys think about them? Like what they say? Because some of them are. I didn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just saw the car. So. All right. It well, let me tell you. If you're like, oh, this is yeah, this is where you were found. Us, yeah. Well, I found that it was pretty interesting because it does. There's some of them that kind of talk about your your past or like nostalgic. Some of them are referencing. One of them's referencing. You know, the fight that you're. There's lots of ether. There's traces of ether. You know, mm-hmm. if you scanned it before you went in there, you would um, get a hint as to the enemy you're fighting. I guess that's my play on that. But then there's also one that I, I believe hints towards um, Black Armory and what we might find there, and that we may actually come back there. I'm not, I'm not 100 percent certain of that. It's just, it, 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 I think it, I think we might be coming back to the Cosmodrome or, uh, for Black Armory in some way. Um, I would love that if that's the case. But Amanda was like, know. "This might be the last time you're ever here," and I was like. Don't you say that, Amanda? <laughs> <laughs> no, I so you think it was a team vote. You think they're setting us up? Yeah, I think I think they are. I think they give us a hint. And um, there's a there's some couple some people have scanned it and um, collab, you know, combined them all. So you can listen to them or watch them on YouTube if you don't want to go out there and scan them. There's people that have put them or up on YouTube and you can watch them. Can't go back and scan them. All <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but like, um, they're not lore collectibles. They're literally just audio bits. So you don't get any kind of like triumph or anything for them. Mm-hmm. So you can listen to them and they're really interesting. I think they um, make there's some foreshadowing in there and I don't want to like ruin it for anybody, but I want people to listen to it and you can find it on YouTube. Um, it, uh, I got to tell you, I was not as impressed with the, the throwback. The, the nostalgia didn't get to me in in this mission like it got to you guys. Like, I feel like Bungie has really been like leaning into nostalgia for like the last two years and I'm kind of getting sick of it, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like Rise of Iron was all about nostalgia. And then they've done a lot of nostalgia stuff, bringing back old weapons and even quests for those old weapons in Destiny 2. Sorry to put you on the spot, but can you give me some examples for context? uh, Rise of Iron, the Kostov mission or Kvostov mission. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a good point. The Galahorn mission. Like, I feel like Rise of Iron was very heavy on nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I feel like even the Age of Triumph, where... You know, they brought back the old raids and like that kind of stuff. It's like Destiny Year Three was to me just like 
a nostalgia year for destiny right but then when they True. they go back to that well like i felt i feel like it's just too soon like you can't just keep hitting this nostalgia well and expect it to never run dry yeah for me it's running dry but we've had even a, getting the thunder lord as a as a quest as a I, reward was like this is a really great gun one. but i already had a thunder lord for three years like mm-hmm. i hear you but it's it free be cooler to get a new gun see like as long as they're giving this stuff for free in there, then I'm okay with it. And that does make Black Armory a big question mark. Like, is how much of the Black Armory is going to be uh, nostalgia, oh. old stuff brought forward? And I, I really do hope there's a lot of new stuff because, in that sense, then yeah, I'm going to be disappointed. But for me, if it's content that they just add back into D2 that any base game owner can have, I think it's fantastic personally. Right. And it's been over a year, and and going back there, it was like, oh man, I I love this place. There's so many memories for for me there. You kind of. You guys kind of touched on it, uh, Watts, for the most part. Um, why don't we have Destiny 1 on PC? I mean, it's just file save as, right? Apparently. Copy paste. That's all it is, right? Copy paste. Easy. Control C, Control V, baby. There you go. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, See, I, I found sorry, Control I, A, Control C, Control V. There you go. I, I think I found, it would be cool if they had a version for PC. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. That's it. I'm done. Oh, so I, I think that it, it, it was interesting to tie up some loose ends a little bit. You know, that was the that was the um, the guy that we escaped from in our very first mission. And mm-hmm. we go back and, you know, and, and kill him. Again. You know, if we were able to kick us again. Yeah, did we already kill yeah. him? It was a different did, guy. Did you kill him? It was a different guy. Was it a different guy? I think I so. I thought it was when I was playing it. I thought it was the same guy that had gotten. But did we kill him in that one? No, he, he, he definitely died. Oh, that's right. And which then is we fly why, away is, on the ship, then the stranger's like, what's yeah. up with that guy? Yeah, exactly. it's like, oh my god, you actually killed a Kel? Wow. That's right, that's right. That's right. And the, every Kel after that is always strutting around, rah, rah, rah. then you kill him, you're like, easy. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I did see, I've seen a lot of people talk about how this is so much easier compared to the Whisper, and the Whisper is so awesome. I don't think they were going for the same thing no. at all. I think this was no. very much so like, we're bringing machine guns back. Let's have a way for everyone to get this gun type in their arsenal going into Black Armory. So I don't think it was supposed to be something that's difficult or only the select few players have. Yeah. No, this reminded me of more of the Gallahorn mission from Rise of Iron, where it's like, right. you know, you remember the Gallahorn, right? You love yeah. the Gallahorn. Well, now we're going to bring you back to this place you love and give you this gun you love. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it's really what it is. So and yeah. and again, because it's free, everybody can access it. Even like base game Destiny Two owners can access it. I think that's cool. I like that. I like yeah. that aspect. And again, seeing D One stuff in D Two engine and especially on PC, that makes me very excited. But if they lean heavily into that with this yearly content that we've paid for, that is supposed to be fresh stuff that gets introduced in the game, right. then I will be disappointed and I'll be like, what the hell? Like, Yeah, I think I think that's how I feel as well. If, for the seasonal stuff that's all free, if mm-hmm. you want to bring back some throwback armors or some weapons, totally fine. But in the paid content, it needs to be interesting, new, yeah. fresh weapons, especially for Black Armory because it's so heavily focused around these golden age awesome crazy weapons that we've never seen before so those weapons they need to be something pretty special yep. definitely no bring backs now i will uh, say this the sorry. new thunderlord is way better than the old thunderlord it, <laughs> like, is, way it is it's really good an amazing gun like if they had renamed this something else it could have been any gun because it's just <laughs> it's so much better than the old thunderlord <laughs> How much heat do you think they would get if they did a nostalgia play for Black Armory? Like, you're already expressing that they've kind of dipped into this well too many times. So for Black Armory, do you, if they do that, like, throughout the whole of the expansion, it'll probably be met with negative reception, right? I think it depends on who's talking. If it's somebody who's new to Destiny 2, I don't think they're going to have a problem with it. It's somebody who's spent the last four years playing Destiny. I think some people are going to be sick of it and some people are going to receive it well. I think it just depends on the yeah. person. Yeah. If they keep some doing it though, like it. that well isn't endless, right? This is like no. eventually it's going to run dry. Yeah. yeah. The the thing is like this is the type of game where we like to grind content and it's okay if we're playing similar things so long as they have the reward structures like built correctly. And I mean I I personally would love to see old D1 content come back for free as new strikes just repurpose a lot of that stuff and put it as strikes. if it's part of a season pass is it free 
I, I think it would have to be part of the base game as like the seasonal update for free stuff. The so, seasonal updates, yeah. yeah. Not the paid yeah. content. Like new strikes with new story pushing content for Black Armory. But how about some old stuff, like some redux of strikes that they could bring back from D1. And like that's a perfect injection of new content for players both new to the game and old to the game as well. Like maybe even throw in a, some sort of weapon that is uh, exclusive to that strike. Yeah, strike specific loot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be down. Or if they took those spaces and did something with, uh, like they did with the uh, the haunted forest, and created mm -hmm. created evolving spaces that include D one stuff and D two stuff. For I me to generate that. any interest, they have to do something brand new with it. Like if they were going to bring back the old raids, they'd have to do something brand new with those raids. I don't want to grind those raids again. Like I, we did Vault of Glass for a year, then we did. Or you know, for Vanilla Destiny, then we did it again for the tr the whatever Triumph era, whatever it was called. Like I just I don't want to I don't want to see it come around for the third time. I want new content, I want new new experiences, new stuff to do. I want a sequel to Destiny. I don't want Destiny back. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, if it's anything that we have to pay for, that's bringing back D one stuff. Then there's a there's obvious reason the community gets salty about that. But if it's straight up free content that's added to the base game, I think it's a win win. Like I'm not gonna be like, yeah. no thanks. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do whisper style missions for last word and you know other weapons that people were crazy about, I love that. I think the whisper mission is absolutely amazing. It, you know, it's bringing back an old weapon. So yeah, but we all we all love that. But yeah, I don't. <laughs> nope, nope. Put it in the paid stuff. I want super cool, new, awesome, fresh things that I get to try and figure out and put in my build the way that I want to use them. Yeah. Did you do whisper after? Uh, you after it, is, your mic is cutting out. Whatever your, your mic's cutting out. Whatever you did to adjust it, <laughs> revert it back because it definitely <laughs> blew, it blew it out. Oh boy. Even the uh, even the whisper mission, like the mission, was so much cooler than the reward. I know that everybody loves the whisper, the worm, and it's the most powerful right. gun in Destiny for certain situations. But it's also the same gun that we've been using for three years. Like, wouldn't it have been cooler if it if the best two guns in Destiny PVE weren't the sleeper simulant and whisper of the worm, which are basically just duplicates of the guns we've been using? Like, wouldn't it be so cool if like the best two PVE weapons were brand new and you had to learn brand new ways to use them and maximize your... Yeah, yeah. Like that? So, I'm going to try this again. Do you oh, hear me now? It's still blown out. <sighs> Alright. I, I don't know what's going on. I'll try and fix it. Just don't, don't, don't I talk literally directly. didn't do anything. Instead of being close to the mic, you moved away from it. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh... That's weird. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, what was I going to say? So I forgot. Sorry, go ahead. I'm distracted no, yeah. by the tech issue. I don't know, Briar. I'm not taking issue with this. I think that whatever, I think we're seeing something happening with a group of at Bungie that's creating Whisper the Worm. We're seeing, um, you know, Thunderlord. We're probably going to see Last Word. Your nostalgic type weapons coming back that we fan favorites that we love from D1 that are coming back and are being made available for everybody for people who haven't played D1 have just played D2 they're getting a chance to, to get their hands on these awesome weapons are we going to have to go through this again in Destiny 3 Pope like all the Destiny 1 weapons and all the Destiny 2 weapons well, here's, here's, here's where I am with this I think that and then Dusty Four, are we gonna get all the Dusty One, Dusty Two, there, Dusty Three weapons? No, nah, man, like that that <laughs> I feel like I feel like that that we're at a point with Forsaken that they've changed the way that they're making game design and we've gotta yeah, look like at the, the 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 way that they're making the game and we gotta look forward instead of looking back on this one. I that's my opinion. That's that what I'm I'd like to be doing. Well, well, Brian, well do, that's what they're do, do you that's, not they're, this they're not charging for any of this stuff. It's it's nostalgic. Uh, fun interest of into the game, and even the even the even the old uh, um, exotics are yeah. coming back with random rolls, even when they drop with armor and we and weapons. And it's interesting to get them. Yes, I would like to get Forsaken weapons, but I am getting random rolls on my stuff now. So, but I don't know. I like the way that they're doing it. Yeah, I think the okay. question, Briar, is: Are you enjoying what they've done with Forsaken so far? Uh, some of it, yeah. Uh, I do definitely. I think Forsaken is the best version of Destiny Two that we've had, 
But I think it's more interesting. I think we've talked this topic to death. I think what Desta brought up with No Destiny 4, I think, is a much more inter- <laughs> interesting <laughs> conversation to move to. I mean, so, it's a 10-year contract with Activision, right? We know yeah. that based on the leak court documents. So I think they're going to do this content cycle that we currently have lined up. That'll take us another year about till next September. Uh, potentially they do another one after that. Then they launch Destiny 3. And then that's the end of the contract. They've already announced their partnership with Tencent, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're working on a new IP there. And I the team could potentially shift to that. They could pass off the Destiny IP the way that they did with the Halo IP. And I think as a studio, when you work on a brand for a decade, you kind of want a refresher. You want to like get your creative juices flowing again in a new way. How long were they on the Halo franchise? Do you guys know? Uh, when did the Xbox launch? So you got to like remember, decade, though, right? they actually had they a started that build for the Mac. Yeah. Running Mac World before the game came out. So they were on Halo for... Oh, my audio is better, by the way. Net East. Thank you. Yeah, it was Net East, not Tencent. Yep. Net Ease. Net Ease. Yeah. Net Ease. Ease. I'm close with names sometimes. It works. No. <laughs> if you Googled it, you'd see it. <laughs> well, what do you guys think? I mean, that's just my two cents. That well, makes sense to me. Go ahead, watch. Um, I was so if we're I'm not gonna go specific about leaks that we've heard about D3, but it sounds like they're going in a quite different direction mm-hmm. with what kind of game they want to make. Uh, It sounds like they're really trying to figure out what Destiny is and they feel like it's going to be better as a more RPG based game with FPS elements rather than the other way around. And I think if they lean into that, that kind of makes it refreshing for them because they're they're making almost a completely different game. It will have the same world and the same lore, but the things that they can create, like the classes, the subclasses, the weapons, all that stuff would be completely different to what we're currently seeing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, they haven't talked about subclasses so much. I think the only context that I remember reading about, because that story was super interesting to me, was that characters would have some sort of PvPVE element, like in the world, you choose lighter, you choose dark, and then you kind of you end up on that side of the battle and stuff like that. Am I am I way off base? Is that interesting to you guys? No, I mean I'd definitely be. I find that to be incredibly the, the... interesting. The leak was very, it wasn't very specific. It wasn't like, we're going to get this and this is what the subclass is going to be. It but was I like think three if they're, comments. Yeah, if they're <laughs> going more towards RPG, then there should be, if we're thinking what an RPG is and having that PvPVE and, you know, world battles and stuff, you'd think of more extensive skill trees, which is way different than what we have yeah. right now. I, there's been a lot of new people coming into chat lately because, you know, obviously Destiny 2 has been free on PC and a lot of them oh, yeah. want to know about like skills and classes yeah. and all that. And I'm always like, well, <laughs> you know, I say pick a hunter because I'm a hunter at heart and I love, you know, the the hunter lifestyle. But like at the end of the day, Destiny doesn't really have like true diversity when it comes to the classes. So if they do take that direction with Destiny 3, like I think it'd be very interesting and I think it could open up the sandbox in a way that right now it feels very um, one dimensional at times because it's like damage, 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 damage. Like I want. Right. From all the yeah. you want one more RPG class specific kind of play styles where it's like I'm a Titan, so I'm a tank and mm-hmm. I take the damage and the kind of skills that I have in weapons and armor reflect that. And I'm a hunter and I'm DPS and warlock i'm healer or buffer debuff kind of person and for all the leaks that i've heard it kind of sounds like they're leaning more into that type of game of course we don't know how true that is we don't know Mm -hmm. if those things changed like three weeks ago (laughs) who knows where these things are coming from i wonder how much is from the leaks and how much is from what people have extrapolated in their own minds from those leaks and created a fiction of i see that happen a lot especially with the current youtube culture People just go crazy with what they believe it could be. And then that becomes some sort of fact that yeah. people think is true. I've seen that but as well. I, th- I think it's been like, what, four, four, like one line things that the guy that the guy posted that he yeah. believes Destiny 3 to be. There's also the other thing that w- had a lot of people concerned last week. Activision talking about the microtransaction model not working and being disappointed with Destiny. That were they talking about the microtransaction or were they talking about sales being disappointed? They, spe- they specifically said it didn't meet their expectations and they want to look to new revenue streams. They were discussing microtransactions specifically 
if I if I'm remembering correctly. Honestly, they just need to give me some cool ass hot hair for my hunter. I will buy it. <laughs> and a give beard. us some beards that we can buy. You know, I grow I, beard I, I, will, I will pay for that. <laughs> give me good microtransactions and a good game. I, I want will Red pay Dead for Redemption beard tech. Level <laughs> ten beard. <laughs> we'll be in the side seven on the mustache. Let's go. I yeah, was, honestly, that, I find that incredibly concerning because I already kind of have a problem with the microtransactions in Destiny. Like, if you're buy, buying a full price game with a season pass, and there's microtransactions on top of that, like, you know, how much is this game going to cost me? Five hundred dollars. Agree. Totally agree. <laughs> if you want a beer, beer, it costs you a little bit extra. Concerned much? hearing it from an Activision earnings call because that means the parent company is affecting the the lower level company like in the tier of hierarchy. And, and that's concerning for me because when monetization starts impacting creativity, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with, with the, the game design <laughs> genre. It's why I was so frustrated with Tess. I believe it was Tess in the original Destiny being taken out and then replaced to sell us stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's just kind of like, I don't think when you're a creative guy, I'm like, how can I sell some paper masks? In, in destiny to make more money like that's not what you do as a creative but so much about there, destiny there is too. the business to to keep in mind like it's a difficult balance mm -hmm. so much about destiny 2 at the launch of it felt like it was steering you toward tests as well it's like you know the slowdown of gaining experience and the you know the trials kind of showcase of everybody's emotes and like there's so much that just seemed to be like subtly pushing you toward Tess Everest and going to spend money at that store. I feel so like they've, that they've admitted that subtly. that was the wrong direction to take the game and that they've changed the direction. And then right, but now Activision is saying publicly game. that they're not happy with the sales of Destiny. Right. So we got one story from Bungie and one story from Activision. I'm honestly not concerned about that call at all. No, because. Uh. So first, first things, Destiny is completely changing the way that they're releasing content. We're not doing DLC campaign things anymore. We're having seasons that are free to update the game for people who don't want to buy DLC. And then we have these experiences that are expanding on the end game. And this is going to be Black Armory is the first iteration that we're seeing. And I think if I'm from a business standpoint, I'm like, okay, well, Destiny Forsaken didn't sell as much as we expected. But that is to be expected because Destiny 2 released such a negative review across the board. But let's see how this new release of content goes and then see where we are from there. I yeah. think I don't think any company could see what happened with Destiny 2 initially and expect things to Forsaken to come out, have good reviews and sell right? like like COD or Red Dead or anything. Yeah. That's the weird thing about Destiny 2 reviewed well. Like, if you look it up on Metacritic, the reviews are good. It wasn't until a month later that people started getting upset with Destiny. Like, and they got to the end game. Well, it was the core fan base realized that, like, the structure of the game changed fundamentally. The people that were still playing yeah. were not yeah. happy. If you, with if you look up reviews of Destiny and then you look up, like, the general attitude of people who talk about Destiny on, like, Reddit or Twitter or whatever, like, you, it's, it's shocking how different they are. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of those people. You might cut might out. Cut out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you also don't happen to... Did you check the thing in Discord where it automatically adjusts your input sensitivity? I switched noise suppression on and off. I'll adjust the uh, input sensitivity thing. Yeah. It, well, so, it sounds like, you're, like your mic sensitivity is dipping down. It sounds down. super bassy, and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, I adjusted the gain originally. Anyway. I don't mean to interrupt the conversation. No, no, no well, you're good. Oh, what were you going to say? Yeah. We can hear you now. There, I turned off automatically determine input sensitivity. Is that better? No, it should be no, on, actually. On. Yeah. No, oh, it was on. Oh, okay. Right. Then it was something else. Yeah, just the game. All right, whatever. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Tech problems. Yay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I swear to God, I'm cursed audio wise <laughs> for this show. No, that's Same just audio. Last time. That's just it's audio. True. That is just audio. Um, I think that. I, I am concerned a little bit. I, I don't like that the, the parent company kind of came out and said they didn't do well because they were the... I looked on Forbes from August 2017 to August 2018. They were number eight. And people say that they were higher than that, actually, like later in the life cycle of Destiny 2. So I'm just like, 
you're telling me they performed that well sales wise and it's still not enough for you. Like how can they yeah, run I'm having a little problem with that? Yeah. After last yeah. week's show, uh, some people had sent some tweets about talking about how like there was over a billion dollars generated essentially from the launch of, um, of Forsaken. What were they expecting for yeah. from Forsaken? That's like if the you problem. generate a billion I mean, like, dollars in September for your sales and you're like, well, you're not hitting these numbers. And then it's like, where did that number come from? A billion. Uh, I, I think of the overall sales for Forsaken. Right it was around like 1.3 or something like that for the month of September or, or the launch or something like that. Like after there's some crazy stats for Forsaken. It was, you know, there were some people yeah. that were floating around the download, the digital download numbers and, and all the different, how things would they even know that? Like Activision doesn't t- talk about that publicly. Do they? They have to for their investors. They're a publicly oh, okay. traded company, so they yes. kind of have to it's, reveal. It's, it's some, crazy because, like, the, you look at you look at that, and, it, and Forsaken did amazingly well. And they're, you know, that's why I have a problem with that earnings call, and I don't want to like continue giving it. I, I feel like the game is in a really great spot. They're yeah. they're publicly the bright, Luke, too. Luke Smith put out they a tweet saying shades. that okay. they're <laughs> they're focused on fan base and what the game that they like the way that the game is playing they're focused on the way that it's playing now it was a way of saying to us hey ignore that <laughs> shit we're, we're making more of this game yeah and I, and also I think if they continue doing that for, this is good forsaken has been nominated for some game of game award awards i nominated it which <laughs> <laughs> it's i mean that can you talk about more of a turnaround than a game being just completely pooped oh, on man, by most dude. of the community to now being nominated for two awards yeah it's quite the, the turnaround yeah. right it's and we can't crazy. forget we can't forget that luke did come out and throw the hammer down and said that he they're did. incredibly proud of what the team has done and that's the direction mm-hmm. that they're going take that yeah. activision <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the only thing that can make me think from a logical point of view uh, as to why they would say that is that the the adoption rate was significantly lower than they thought was going to be as opposed to sales numbers potentially so maybe they were expecting to have like i don't know four five six million concurrence every day playing the game and it was only two or three million concurrence playing the game every day across three platforms and maybe that's that's why they significantly underperformed what they thought was going to happen uh but it's crazy to think that that means you know we better like get more microtransactions. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think it's incredibly smart that they're giving away the game for free on P- PC right now. Very smart, and I'd like to see them do it on Xbox and P- PS4 as well. I don't even think Xbox has had a really good sale, which sucks. Really? Yeah, P- like it's been free on PlayStation. It's been free on uh, PC now. Still nothing for Xbox. Where's really? the Xbox love? Yeah. Right? Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's Who's really the head over there, PC, Phil Schiller. Though. Doesn't he play Spencer? Come on, man. Phil, make, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer. Schiller. Make some things happen. Schiller. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> Spencer's, Spencer's a big <laughs> Destiny player, actually. Phil it's really it's kind of cool to see like somebody at that level who has like a crazy level character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is interesting. This, yeah, this free game was really, really cool for PC because obviously <laughs> um, console players have been exposed to Destiny for a number of years, mm-hmm. whereas PC haven't. So I'm seeing so many people come to the game and they're like, they have no idea about Destiny. They yeah. all know absolutely nothing. And you actually it gets some really interesting feedback mm-hmm. from people who actually don't just want to poop on games and they actually go in and experience it and give feedback. Yeah. And uh, Probably the biggest feedback I've seen that's really interesting, and I think we all kind of know this already, is that Destiny doesn't do a good job of telling you what's going on. <laughs> like, it doesn't tell you about exotics or enhancement cores and what they do, or they don't tell you anything. You just kind of oh, like you to have to go out. to Bungie.net to find that stuff out and right. read. Like, you have to, yeah. and you have to go on YouTube videos and the twelve and updates and. You know what they should do? They should be like, hey, you got an exotic Engram. Here's a 15 part tutorial about exotic Engrams and what they mean. And why they you should. should be More Monster World tutorials. Yeah, Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter World <laughs> tutorials. Just big wall of text. 20 oh, hours you got a I would that quit has a, a dialogue two, box two pops up. And it's like, With 20 pages. Hey, here, you, got you know, like when you play Gambit for the first time and there's like 50 pop ups? Yes. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But do Not, that after yeah. your after your first game's over. It just pops it up and it's like, hey, so you play Gambit. This is what it actually is. That's funny. Take this survey. You, yeah. <laughs> you know, interestingly, somebody came in and was like, hey, how do I do these things that require a team? 
and how do I get into a clan? Like, where in the game yeah, right. do I go and find this to do this? And I was like, I'm really sorry, but you <laughs> being on Twitch right now, Discord, yeah. going to Reddit, going to Discord, going to those places, that's actually how you get into a clan. And they're like, for real? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have the, I brought up the actual quotes about what they were saying. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. You're good. That was it. <laughs> we have we have not yet seen the full core re-engage Destiny, which has led to the underperformance against expectations to date. Some players are in wait and see mode. If you're in, you're deeply engaged. If not, we think now is the time to bring players back. So, so. that does kind of lead to what I was thought. Like their actual daily concurrence is not hitting what they thought was going to happen. And mm-hmm. it's because the, the D2 endgame was just so bad that... How could you expect all of them to return? Mm. Well, it's it's like the the people that got burned by D one, the people that got burned by D two. Like the, a lot of people just are like, "Fuck it, I'm I, I don't care." I'm out. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are like, "I'm twice burned now, my fault." I'm yeah. gonna take a step back. Yeah, which is too bad because like again, Forsaken is definitely one of the best, it's if so not weird. the best expansion they've it's- done to date. Yeah, correct. Briar, did you fall asleep? <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you guys want to get is, into uh, the TWAB? Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Wait, before we do that, though, nah. one more time. Thunderlord's amazing, man. I freaking love it. I was so it's happy really to get good. it. Lightning explosions. It does a lot of damage. Yes, it does. Yes. Oh, my God. I tried it on a spider tank, and it shredded like, yes. the leg armor plating. And I was like, wow, this thing's nuts. I don't, you see the, I don't know if it's supposed to do that much, but I'm not going to complain. I hope they don't know. Did you see, did you see the ribbon? It's perfectly reasonable. The everything, ribbon clip? No, I didn't see Everything it. gets yeah. melted by People Thunderlord. People tried Thunderlord on ribbon. Instead of yeah. using uh, cluster bombs, they used <laughs> Thunderlord and they mm-hmm. one phased ribbon. Yeah. No, they they, uh, they one phased Morgoth <laughs> too uh, without, without melting everything. point. I think, um, like, no, it it does a lot of damage. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's working reasonable. as well as the briefcase in Hitman too. Oh, <laughs> the briefcase. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to play that game. <laughs> Briar, the briefcase is amazing. Are you playing it? I cannot wait. I played. A I love that man one. And I you you don't get the briefcase right away, but like once you unlock it, you ha- you have a sudden perspective in life where everything's getting cased and briefed and it's great <laughs> you're casing the joint and you're making a brief it also targets around the corner and defies all physics you go like i've this type seen of thing. clips it has tracking on it i don't understand it's a tomahawk working as intended working as it's intended. beautiful <laughs> so one of the rewards since we're finishing up talking about thunderlord one of the rewards for getting the thunder ward is a on the Bungie Rewards program on their website, you can get a shirt right. with really cool. a, yeah, what is it? <laughs> with a, a what? <laughs> dealer, a death dealer on a horse with the heavy metal. It's, me- like, a it's like a heavy metal with band. a thunderbolt and a horse and a thunderlord. It looks <laughs> like it's a horseman of the apocalypse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Carrying a thunderlord it's, as painted it, on your van. It feels 80s yes. metal. <laughs> it's 80s it's, metal. It's awesome. I want it. Yeah. I'm getting it. It's yeah, awesome, exactly. though. Uh, fun fact, this was you the can cut the sleeves off and look even more metal, right? right? Yeah. You got a point. I didn't right think about shoulder. that. Of course, <laughs> more punk. <laughs> Add That's some great. studs. Yeah. If you you got to earn the gun to buy the t-shirt, right? <sighs> yeah. Damn. That's yeah. Be that's tough. a tough one. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder what the uh, artist they, was doing. Like they bring in. All right, here's last word. Yeah, it shoots really fast. Here's thorn. It's poison over time. Uh, it took a little bit more time on the next one. Just don't be too judgmental. This is Thunderlord. I, I have a guy holding it on a horse with a lightning bolt. I don't know if we can incorporate that somehow. And they just never use that art in the game. Like, throw on the t-shirt. It looks totally bad. Uh, what does it say? What is that text around it? It's, it's uh, I believe it's the flavor text. Uh, th- uh, they return from the fields uh, uh, far. Their eyes have passed. Yeah, it's it's the flavor it's the flavor text on the board. Oh, nice. All right, um, mm-hmm. that guy says that Holtz needs the shirt and get the mullet. Agreed. I think that's mm-hmm. that's a, 
A little yeah. difficult to do the mullet it's, right now. Uh, it's called a grind. You can grind out a mullet, yeah. all right? <laughs> you can grind out the mullet. Oh, yeah. No excuses, man. You chose that haircut when you went to Texas. I can't hear interview. Like, I don't have don't, my headphones on. Tony even. <laughs> so, uh, they started talking about Season of the Forge as well. Uh, it's so important that the, you know that you you need to get this before November 27th. So the Lost Cryptarch Quest will be available through yes. November 27th. So important. you need to get Thunderlord before then. If That's you have when Season of the Forge comes out. It's November 27th. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, we'll get the uh, Black Armory Armory <laughs> expansion. <laughs> or not expansion. Season <laughs> Black Armory. What is Seasonal What do we call update? Black Armory? It's like, update. It's like an expansion, but well, no, it's not. It's um, it's a content drop. It's a... DLC. You think it's DLC? I guess it is DLC. Right? It's not can, a DLC. I mean, it. it is downloadable yeah. content, I suppose. Mm -hmm. If you're looking yeah. at the specific <laughs> definition, it is downloadable. You and have to pay for it, and it's downloadable. Paid yeah. seasonal yeah. content. So, <laughs> yeah. I, they're trying to change content the terminology. To, I think they're trying to soften the marketing terminology of the product. And that's a that's a PR strategy. Uh, but it's, they're trying to make it be like are. we're making your end game better. We're not giving you campaign or cutscenes. Please just expect. Please expect just <laughs> exotics and like yeah. a new raid. It's got a new. It's got a new raid layer. I wonder how that's gonna go over. Right? It's like not getting new cutscenes, new story stuff. Like how's I'm that gonna go over? That. Forsaken. About like, it? No, I'm bummed about that. Like oh, okay. Forsaken was the first time we got one of the better stories with the the destiny lore and like you look back at the destiny 2 launch that's pretty compelling but it all ended up being barely meaningless except for the traveler exploding but now we have forsaken it speaks about Cade's death and they've continued to tell the story every week with little hints and snippets sure. with the queen yeah in the background yeah. i'm like oh i really see, really like this that's we're gonna get that's more why of that, i think though. yeah i think they're gonna continue that that thought process and that storyline and keep talking about it we're just not going to well, get like the big sweeping story cutscenes and missions. I, I, think. I hope they do that for D three. Then you know, like oh, you don't want to see the story continue? Cuts. No, I do want to see the story continue. No, I think they're I, just sorry with use Black Armory game cutscenes. It's just no cutscenes. Yeah, I think it will, but like they'll still do in game cutscenes, right? They ju they're just not going to do like blur cinematics or whatever because they didn't Correct. specify no cutscenes ever. I think they're do they're talking more so about not having the fully acted, like fletched out CG <laughs> cutscenes. Yeah, you know, you can do in game stuff with the in game engine. Exactly. Yeah. I imagine those cutscenes cost a lot of money to have all those high yes. renders and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. So that's quite a bit of money that could go towards reskinning the Thunderlord. <laughs> a new exotic. <laughs> Brand new. So yeah. November twenty seventh. November 27th, the Season of the Forge will begin. Is it uh, December 4th? The Black Armory is released. Yep. So we get kind of like a, a week with theoretically like a one week meta. Like, will we get like a, a patch with like meta updates and stuff like that? Like, what is what is the difference between the Season of the Forge and. Do you think PvP is going to break silence finally? There's what? a Vi doc coming out on the 27th, which is probably going to tell us stuff. So if there's any information about trials or PvP or anything, I assume it's going to be in the Vi doc. Probably not. Uh, nah, I'm just <laughs> yeah, you're right, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. It's been three months. We got another three to go before we hear any changes about PvP. That's how it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Especially during December, like December, January, you wouldn't hear a peep out of it. And they, they warned us about that in this 12. They're like, it's yeah, going to be light on info during Christmas time. Mm. Christmas or were they talking about uh, Thanksgiving? I took it's usually it Christmas. Christmas. It's, it's basically like for like the month of December, almost. And then most of or most a part of January. The first so part. Like, Okay, so they say next week, as the holiday season begins in our neck of the woods, the news coming out of the studio will be random and light. The week after, we'll be exploring all the details of another kind of season. Stay tuned. So it sounds like they're taking the week off for Thanksgiving, and the week after, they'll be yeah. talking about the new season. Mm -hmm. And we need to hear about the dawning. Should be hearing about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, that's after true. Black Armory comes out. Who wants Destiny 2 SRL? Nobody. 
I want <laughs> Destiny 2. I'll say, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, I want it because I know of a ton of other people really like it. Like, people know, really I like SR. Have people. they ever checked out a racing game? Uh, I don't know, but they like driving their fucking sparrows and they want to drive it, and drive them fast in the game instead of just having them blow Tafty. up every 10 Tafty. feet. Tafty. Have you not thought about SRL when you're playing the Prison Elders Strike and been pancaked by a train? The only time I think about SRL is when somebody in chat says, hey, you think they're going to do SRL again? <laughs> and I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do just to spite you. Like, just you. Like, okay, I, I, don't, I don't want the dawning to just focus on SRL, but I would like to see SRL to finally come back, especially with, you know, the PC and the nice graphics. There's going nice. to be snowballs, Tafty. We're going to have snowball fights. On SRL? People that want SRL, <laughs> I hope they bring it Chuck back. Chuck a snowball while you're but racing? I don't care. Knock someone off the sparrow? That would be even better. Oh, a kick? How Made about a blue explode. blue turtle shell? How about throwing throwing snowballs while on your sparrow? How about throwing yeah. engrams? Yeah, how about you pick up an engram and then you chuck the engram? Like the exploding exotic engrams? Yes. They already have that in there. There, it's in the game. Copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they also showed off a couple of teaser images for Caesar of the Forge with the the EXO, uh, Caesar of the Drifter, the XO. and good, Season good of the Blank with a ninja robot. It's Sweeper Bot. Yeah, it's, you think it's it. Sweeper Bot? It's you think you trade it in the broom for a sword? But but no, let's put it together, <laughs> Is the right? EXO so, lacks me. <laughs> no, no, it's no, no. <laughs> the exo, no, it's, that's different exo for sure. Because oh, when okay. they put, so, yeah. when we saw like the little teasers of all of the DLCs that are coming, it showed Callus, like Callus's face and statue, and there was a door. And then we have Sweeper Bot, which we know Sweeper Bot's doing something funky with Callus. Yep. So, season of the Sweeper Bot. Do you think Callus is going to come back? <laughs> Sweeper Bot's story. Well, look at the so background the of, of the image. Yeah. Fat. Growth. It's got a callus like fatty type. growth. Fatty growth. Season maybe of have, fatty growth. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Benedict gets fat. His story to plumpness. Benedict rounds out. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, list of things to expect on November 27th. Infamy rank points, infamy rank points awarded for all bounties will be doubled. <laughs> Uh, numerous dailies, daily challenges, and weeklies have had their objectives retuned to take less time and be easier to complete. A new bounty has been added to the daily rotation that requires primeval envoy kills. Uh, there will be infamy rewards. Subdivision rank-ups now award gambit le legendary weapons or armor. That's good. Uh, they're changing the primeval catch-up mechanics to make them a little more punishing if you're we need to talk about behind. This. Okay, so teams yeah. that summon their primeval second can only ever receive one catch-up stack of Primeval Slayer. Previously, the trailing team received multiple stacks, depending on how far behind they were. For instance, if the leading team has had seven stacks of Primeval Slayer, when trailing, when trailing team summoned, they would receive four stacks. Now they will receive only one. So it's well, going to be harder to make those comebacks. If you summon first, it's, you're done. You win. Yeah. Which teams aren't going to be as close? Yeah, man, I that see it that's is, not it's good. Good and bad. It's good. It's good. It's. I know a lot of us have been upset by the catch up mechanics because it feels like you're being punished for summoning first. But also, this could have a very negative effect of if some team is behind, they're not going to want to play anymore. They're just going right, to leave they the just game. quit out and look they for another quit. game. It's a really, it's a really tricky balance of balancing to where it's not punishing for players to summon first, but you still keep people playing the game so they're not just quitting. It's a really delicate balance they have to do. Uh, the way it <laughs> seems now, there's too much of a catch-up mechanic. It feels like there's too much of a reward band. I think four yeah. is a lot to get. Yeah, I usually only have two catch-up packets. If, if I summon first with my crew, it's so rare that I lose currently. Like, so I, I haven't really had an issue with the catch-up mechanic in the past. I think good I'm teams, kind of generally, if they summon, they just burn it down. Yeah, you burn. Like, you 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 know, do shoulder charges your Titan, and then you melt them with some Warlock buddies, and the Hunter does whatever. <laughs> if I'm playing Blade with brush. a team, I would agree with you. If I'm playing with randoms, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> All right. You get to 10 stacks, and you're like, guys, come on. 
Okay, right, somebody shoot this guy. Just shoot, shoot him with your with a pickle. He's gonna die. You no, know, they're and trying to trying to not hurt him. They're trying to capture him instead of kill him. <laughs> I don't know. I, th- I think <laughs> throw a pokeball at him. <laughs> the the catch up mechanics and stuff in the game. I I like that they're there. I think they are a little bit too heavy in some aspects. Um, but I lost my train of thought. I'm just gonna go back to my my coffee. All right. Yeah. Magic cards. Summon your magic, magic cards, cards first. Have you guys played World of Warcraft? No. Crawfish. On November 20th <laughs> through the 23rd, we get double infamy. From the 23rd to 27th, we get triple infamy. So it'll be a good time to grind for infamy. Nice. Grind your infamy. Also, on the note of Gambit, um, on this Gambit stream that they did, they did confirm that there's going to be a pinnacle Gambit weapon. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, that so, I really like, actually. Yeah, that's, that's good news. Yeah. So that'll come in in season of the forge or whatever it's who, called. Yeah. Who took, I got a question for you guys. Who took bygones into the raid? Oh, first I've, time. I've, oh, not first time. No. What'd you go in with? Was everybody doing uh, an God roll? Yeah. God roll Duke Mark Forty Four <laughs> with uh, Outlaw Extended Mag and Rampage. I went. I started with bygones and switched to inaugural by the end of the end of the raid. I had to go figure. A lot of rampage. Go figures will go. I have been like you. Do I mean go figure? I and cannot I remember. <laughs> Briar was too busy worrying Briar, about being five. Briar's like, did I raid? <laughs> 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 How, how'd you guys? I didn't get to check out your stream. How'd you guys do on the raid? Sorry, I know it's way off topic. Fantastic, wasn't it? It was good. Yeah, we we're just at, just out of worlds first. Yeah, yeah. We got to ribbon neck to neck, and that was as far as we got. We came back. Another day I, for Riven. We were like 16 or 18 hours deep. Got to got to Riven. Definitely out of gas. Came back and knocked it out. Like I think mm, not not the next day, but like the third day because we all took a break. But we did it. We got I, it done was, that week though before reset. Get the jacket. Yeah, I was incredibly proud of my team. I got the jacket too. We placed yeah. 90 second. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a tough fight, yeah. and it was a lot of fun, and uh, I, I think those things are super fun. I love it. Did you guys order the jacket? Yeah, yes. I did. Hell yeah. Yeah. Team did, yeah. I Hell forgot yeah. to order the jacket. What? <laughs> I did. It, How it, are we going to make our cool DCP music video? I know. I, it slipped my <laughs> mind, too. And I, I saw like, the jacket. I say, there's no universe I wear that jacket. <laughs> Dude, I don't like the jacket either, mine. but... I love the jacket. I have a jacket that looks exactly like that jacket. You, you better I believe I'm gonna get the whole squad together. That that we I'm gonna get that whole team together at PAX, and we're gonna take some awesome pictures. Can, being can the, be picture? Yeah, we're a 30 second raid team to, to clear last wish. Take a p- bunch of pictures of us dabbing and doing stupid shit. Wonderful. Nice. Yeah, dude, you're uh, you uh, 30 30 second, really? the, uh, There is more in this twab. Oh yeah, what is it? Uh, Brian's trying to get out of here. Briar's trying to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Briar, Briar, once Briar sees like the keeping you updated section, he's, he's checked out of it. So <laughs> good <spot. true. laughs> I don't really see that we have to read the whole twab. It's not our job to be bungee PR. We just no, talk about the don't. interesting stuff. <laughs> uh, who determines what's interesting? We didn't even talk about the pinnacle weapon so much. What do you guys do? Do you like that? Is this an indication that there's going to be a PVE pinnacle weapon if they're doing like PvP, PVE, Gambit? Maybe, maybe not. What do you guys think? Uh, I, I could see them doing like a, a specific perk that does damage in a way to the prime evil. So it's like the only cool. the only legendary weapon that has a potential to do a certain type of DPS to the prime evil type of thing. I think that'd and then be... what if you could run Malfeasance and that? That's what and I'm you saying. Be yeah, a Gambit Master. Yeah, so like maybe it could stack with Malfeasance in some way. I could see them doing because if it's a pinnacle weapon, it's got to be something that is exclusive to that weapon that you cannot get anywhere else in the sandbox. Yeah, that's what makes it a pinnacle weapon. So if it's going to be Gambit, it needs to do something along those lines where it makes a difference when you're playing Gambit. Definitely. But it also makes me say, hey. Can we please have a pinnacle weapon for PVE activities? Pure, well? I'm hoping Pure they PVE. do that. Yeah. I'm hoping they do that. I'm hoping that it's the pinnacle weapon for Crucible, I think, has been a big hit because those weapons are so unique. 
Whereas other legendary weapons are kind of like, yeah, you know, they're all the same. They can kind of all get the same stuff. So I hope they take that and just spread it across the board. So no matter yeah. what type of player you are, you have something to work towards in that season that's really cool. Mm -hmm. so I hope, I hope so. it's Kvasnov. They really haven't done anything nostalgic in a while. So <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! They need to bring back Murmur. There we go. Murmur. There we go. Wow. Murmur was I forgot great. about that guy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All man. right. Twitter questions. Sure. All right. Let's do it. Uh, Michael Brown says to Destin, "How do you manage the negative internet narrative of Destiny on such a high-profile file site like IGN?" I delete <laughs> Twitter off my phone. I don't read most of the comments, <laughs> and I just keep making the show that I want to make. Awesome. Hot take. Yeah. <laughs> uh, CJ filters a lot of the the CJ is obsessed with comments. Still, I've been doing this for ten years, and sometimes <laughs> it gets really toxic. And I'm just like, nope, not gonna, not read, it not gonna yeah. read it today. Not gonna read it today. When you... I see it's going that way, I'm just like, sorry, you like you can't even have a conversation. Yeah. So it's just like, no. and you're a happier like, person today for that, right? Yeah, you are. Like, exactly. It, it, honestly, deleting Twitter off of my phone has been one of the best things for my life that I've done in a long time. I'm less obsessed with social media, less looking at my phone, more. So you only look at it when phone you're phone sitting down at a computer? Correct. That's interesting. I like that. So you, mm -hmm. you don't have Twitter following you. Like if you're in the bathroom, no Twitter. Or if you're like standing in line or if you're interacting with your girlfriend, no mm -hmm. Twitter. It's you have to be sitting down at a computer to interact i like that sounds very it, it healthy it does a lot of things it allows me to be able to think about my responses to people if i'm mad about something I, like i don't have an ability to respond easily it limits it helps me out a lot and i'm less I, mad about dumb stuff i could see that like i think most of my does not matter bad responses Wait until you see the end of these questions the phone. <laughs> <laughs> what was Maybe that i need to do that I think most of the responses I've made on Twitter that have been questionable to people have been through my phone, not mm. my computer. <laughs> <laughs> you should just See, you I, just wake up. You're like, oh, I'm going to tell you, you suck, <laughs> sir. <laughs> God. I, I, yeah, like, I, I, I wanted to be a psych major at one point, and I'm really fascinated by internet culture and why people feel the need to be destructive to other tell people. Tell me to die. Yeah, right. like things like yeah. that. I'm like, why? What would compel somebody to do that? Yeah. Is it to elicit a reaction? Pretty it sure it's a self ref better? reflection of some sort of desire to not have something in their life. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's easy as like one answer though, because right. every, like so many people do it to to us as creators, and I'm sure Watts gets a lot of terrible shit. Unfortunately, I, uh, I think some people do it like yeah. so casually too. It's like they're like. <laughs> Like you have an opinion they don't agree with, so you're you're an asshole, and you, then they move on with their life. They're not thinking about it two seconds after they wrote that comment, right? Mm -hmm. But it could stick with the person who read it for you mm -hmm. know two weeks. That's probably the oh. like the majority of it is that the people who are rigorous in that attitude, like just say bad stuff and move on and don't even think about the effects. Yeah, it's, I it's think actually, it's sorry, Mods, it's, go ahead. It's very interesting if you look at the person's tweets and replies who has said something like truly awful and you'll mm -hmm. see that they are saying it all day to different people mm -hmm. just yeah. the entire day they're just sit telling people that they're awful and they suck and they're ugly and they're gross and they're dumb just all day that's all they're doing joe rogan had the greatest bit in his last stand-up com comedy special on netflix about like he read this awful comment sent to him so he he dug deeper and he clicked on the person's like profile and saw that that's all they do but then he also ran into this thing where she was an active member of a vegan cat organization. Oh, yeah, I saw this. <laughs> and he got, I, I don't know. It just reminded me of that. It's really good. Vegan he, has cat. A special, he has a new special on uh, Netflix you can watch. It's it's really funny. It is really funny. Because he, he does that podcast. So he's very much in the same space that we mm -hmm. are, but on a mm -hmm. probably a larger level. So he talks a lot about this kind of stuff. I'd, I'd be down for deleting Twitter off my phone. But the problem is like, most of my friends that I talk to, like I interact with them in DMs on Twitter. Mm, that's so it's like, point. fuck. I, I, Most of you guys reach out to me via Twitter DMs. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I see it at 9 a.m., you know? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, in our case, it would be like Dada would say, hey, do you want to go get dinner? And then we won't see it till like 20 hours later and be like, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be uh, fair. I, I install it for events. Like I'll mm-hmm. put it back on my phone for events for like uh, uh, business reasons, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, I, important. I've actually gotten the habit of something similar. I, I haven't deleted it off my phone, but I definitely have parts of my day where I try to not be social media focused and then yeah. when i get closer to a stream i'm more social media active or focused or whatever and i do that also for my sanity because if i'm on twitter or any social media outlet constantly checking it i notice that i deteriorate as a person <laughs> and i would not like to deteriorate i would like to thrive as a person yeah. so I try to I try to have those boundaries. Sometimes I don't stick with those boundaries, and I notice it. And other days I'm really good about it. For me, I don't I don't find I deteriorate, but I lose time to Twitter. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'll get into Twitter and I'll be like, you know, I'm just gonna check my messages, see if see what's going on, or you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden, it'd be an hour and a half later, I'm like, fuck, I had shit to do. <laughs> True. So for me, I one one actually other passive benefit is I find myself looking less to Twitter for real friendships and looking more to people in my real life. Like uh, Steven Rue, who's been on the fire team chat show a few times. Like we went and had dinner last night. That's a real life friendship as opposed to like the relationships that you develop on your online persona. And yeah, man, it has a, it has had a tremendously positive impact on not only my social media presence, but also on my personal life. So yeah, that's how I, that's how I handle comments. I don't read them most of the time. (laughs) Uh, I'll check it out sometimes and yeah, I try and really manage the time that I spend in it Yeah, because it's, it's gotten really bad the last few years, like more so than it has in the past. And I'm like, this isn't valuable to me. It's, it's a Rue, Stephen Rue. Yeah. Somebody in chat said a thing. Sorry. (laughs) Uh, D flawless says question for Briar and Destin. What will you now commiserate about now that vault space isn't really an issue anymore? Hmm. Hmm. Something tells me Vault well, Space is still an issue to Briar. Is it Briar? Uh, vault Space yes. is still an issue. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you, we They never fix the items from this current season, I guess we would call it, being able to be pulled out of your collection. So you still have to hold on to a lot of stuff if you're a collector, like a lot of players are. So sure. I would say that it's not 100% fixed, but they're working on it. It's going to get worse if they don't fix it. Because we all the Black stuff Armory. from this season, all the stuff from Black Armory, season of the Drifter, season of the Space Ninja robot, True. like that's all going to just keep building up. So if you're not hitting that 500 now, just give it a minute. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll add more vault space in uh, September 2019. It'll be good. Well, now with the rolls, too, you, you don't know if you got a god roll or not on a piece of gear so i could totally still complain about vault space <laughs> especially with armor because they could change a perk on a piece of armor and then all of a sudden whoop it's the best perk in the game and you're glad you kept that armor piece yeah i've now I've, i'm now like just looking at uh enhanced perks and if i have an enhanced perk i'll keep it if not then i'm just dumping the armor which makes me sad because i do like to keep stuff and as a lot of people know watch the stream i typically at 500 in the vault space but I've got my own end game that I'm chasing right now to get a full page of edge transits. And I'm <laughs> two and a half rows deep so far. I'm getting there. I have five parcel of stardust. I haven't had time to look at stat wise. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Reynolds says, if Thunder Lord is so great, then why hasn't Holtz got a butt tattoo? <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Right? Oh, this Holtz, can up. you get that image that's on that shirt on your butt? No. That's yes. a pretty that's pretty that's the tattoo. That that's it. Would be epic. <laughs> it would be epic. Come on, man. A Grim Reaver on a horse one handing the Thunderlord. <laughs> Look, that sounds like a big investment for a uh tattoo. Also, that's a badass tattoo, and my badass. ass is not bad enough for that tattoo. But it could be. If it you will have once it's put it on like there. Shoulder, you know, shoulder. Or like enti- that's an entire back, honestly. Oh. Down to your butt. Your butt. I would be back. impressed. <laughs> I don't know if impress is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> David Cotton says, what two enemy species working together would be the most catastrophic to the Vanguard? Vex. 
because they do the whole time travel and crazy yeah. alien crap. I feel like they're yeah. pretty, pretty insane. Yeah. Who would Vex go? and Hive, maybe? Taken. Vex and Taken. Think of the <laughs> replication. Ooh. <laughs> they just Taken put a bunch of scions in their time machine replicating device, and it's just, just scions everywhere. Yep. That's Guardians. Okay, Guardians. Guardians and the Vex? Guardians and the Vex. Fuck up the Vanguard pretty bad. Guardians? Just, just Guardians and like a potato at that point, probably. <laughs> I think Vex and Hive is pretty interesting. Yeah, Vex and Hive is... That sounds awful. <laughs> can the Taken do anything to the robots? Sure. Can they take them? Yeah, they can take them. There are, right. there are Taken sure. Minotaurs, Taken... So, taken you're right. Are you're the right. Master I couldn't remember. They're yeah. the most, some of the most annoying mobs. Well, basically all, all Taken are, but the... My favorite mob is the Taken Captain. He's cute. The oh, one that's God. always chucking the blight at you? Yeah. You're into bad oh, boys, oh, aren't God. you? <laughs> <laughs> Captain's so annoying. Okay. He's just, he's annoying, but he, he does more than one. Th he does a lot of multitude of things. He's a bit and of a spaz. And I find that, find that interesting. He, he's teleporting everywhere. Yeah. He's throwing blindy balls. He's shooting you. <laughs> yeah, he does a lot of stuff. Well, it's great. I, okay, I stick with me. Vex and Taken. Teleportation and replication. That does sound Doubling terrible. up repeatedly. Yeah. If I they were travel. working in tandem. Oh my god. <laughs> they would just yeah. overwhelm the tower. They would just throw their corpses at the wall <laughs> until they walked up it. That's true. Well, the Cabal, I feel like, took their best shot. That's true. And they did pretty good, but... So now that we know guardians can be killed with Cade's death, so like our ghosts can die and the guardians can die, right? Oh, well, we we like we knew that from like Rise of Iron. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Like, with a big enough force, couldn't any of the evil forces basically win? Like, so just nuke us and kill just, us and the ghosts at the oh, same time? Yeah, they're just lazy. Is what you're saying? If if they communicated like, hey, we took out the ghost, like the scorn are like, hey, oh yeah, they killed Cade's ghost. Like that's their weakness. You think the enemy factions would talk to each other and that would spread around. Like yeah. Well, there was only one sniper that could make that shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want his sniper rifle. Can we talk I know. about that? That'd be nice. Just wouldn't that be I just I want them to bring back the dudes, the barons, make the mission super hard, give me specific loot from it. One of them should be the sniper. Steal I want their that gun sniper. and wear their ass. That's what I want to do. Honestly, I, I wish that's something that Bungie would like take take to heart as a design core. Is that like enemies that we go up against? They could potentially drop their things that they have, so we could have them. Because that that's always been something that's really cool about looters, and you don't see it too often in yeah. Destiny. It's usually some something special that. exotic. So you saw it from like some strike bosses and stuff like that. In you know. It just feels like the armor, that's an area that they could really specify. We we improve in. We talked about it for Nightfalls, and yeah. it would be a great opportunity. The Forsaken would have been a good opportunity for it, though, to grind right. those Forsaken bosses. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Absolutely. hoping they can just bring them back because it's content that's in the game. They just have to add specific no, the, to they'll, it. No, they'll go the, we'll go ahead into um, Destiny 3, and they'll bring it back nostalgically. One at a time. Most, I thought as of long as I get to wear his armor. Callus's robot, which has infiltrated the tower, and everybody just seems cool with it. Yeah, it's <laughs> potentially, he's taking up shop under stairs. Shax's robots, mm. and it could be like Ooh, execute orders. Well, a little virus action. Start taking out ghosts. Mm. They act all friendly. <laughs> Let me polish up that ghost for you, Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> ghosts need to polish, Governor. <laughs> Like maybe there's a ghost wash day, and all the ghosts have to be washed, and the and robots they just, just kill all the guardians, they lose them. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Tyler Gang says, "What do you think about Sony pulling out of E3? First time in 24 years that they won't be there." They're going through a lot of stuff right now. So new CEO. They had a terrible showing last year. I was in it. It was awful um, to see to see live and like. It was just a disaster. Um, I think watching it, though, a lot of people really enjoyed viewing it. I hope they're resetting. What excites me more is that this gives Xbox a chance to reset. And next generation, it's going to be a free-for-all. Like They're mm. going to both come out of the gate, gate swinging. 
Now, a lot of people probably like write off Xbox, but they just acquired two new studios. They just acquired Obsidian and In Exile, and they have some really, really interesting IPs that could be potentially, or at least ideas from those IPs, like uh, Alpha Protocol, a stealth action RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, there was uh, Hunters the Reckoning, I believe, which is almost like a God of War sort of style game with four different archetypes of heroes that you could play as. But those ideas could be created into something really, really good. And with yeah. Microsoft backing those companies, I am super excited about the future of Microsoft. And if they could go toe to toe with PlayStation storytelling ability out of uh, the Santa Monica studio yeah. with their new studio, the does anybody know the name off the top of your head? Mm. The one that's also in Santa Monica, that game studio. No, no, no. It's company. No, no, no. They they're creating a branch to tell narrative stories in the same fashion that Sony oh, okay. Santa Monica has been with God of War and um, the Naughty Dog Studio. Last of Us. Yeah, it's like the the. It's not the Coalition. That's Gears. It's the. It starts with an I. Anyway. Yeah. Very excited. Uh, about to, to me, it, it just yeah. feels like it's a matter of time because, like, initiative. Like Microsoft initiative. prints money. They're not in the same position as Sony, where Sony has had a lot of problems. Like their their yeah. their PlayStation division obviously is successful, but like a that's lot the, that's holding the company together. Exactly, a lot of the other parts of Sony are struggling, and Microsoft is freaking a giant in comparison. So, mm-hmm. it, you guys don't think that Sony is uh, prepping something like uh, you know Bethesda did at E three? Like what? No, they're oh. not going to E three. No, they they've completely yeah. pulled out of E three. I understand, and so did other companies, and they. Oh, so they're going to have. They're just going to do something across the street, like no. So they're not. I don't think that means that they're going to do anything. Like that's the way that Mm -hmm. I'm reading it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They've also. No, I get what you're getting at, Pope. Mm -hmm. I. I don't think they're going to do a conference. Okay. So that's that's that yeah. would be really interesting if they didn't do a conference. It, it seems like a lot of companies are taking this trend of like moving away from the E3s and having their own in-house thing, like with you know Blizzard having BlizzCon for several years now, and yeah, like it seems like Sony wants to do that. I mean, they did that the PSX experience, like that's that's been mm-hmm. growing, right? Well, it's such a different they age PSX now. PSX also. Oh, they did. Then it used to be, yeah, they did cancel PSX. I didn't realize as well. that like now it's like you make an announcement and there's a thousand YouTubers that, you know, spread the word for you. And there's a thousand blog posts and there's a thousand, you know, there's like, you don't have to be in front of, you know, the the magazine press, like you had to be in the nineties, right? Like if you wanted to get your message out of there, like that's where you went because that's where all, that's where the magazines were going to be. And you, you know, that was the big event for the year. And that's where all the, the people who bought the games to sell like at GameStop or Walmart, like that's where, all those people were, and it's just a different world now. Now you sell them yeah. directly to your customers using a, using a, some online portal over another. You got, you know, the press has changed dramatically since like E three became a thing. It's, it's just a different world. But uh, I do fear for PlayStation. The Xbox is a strong brand, and they, like, they got right now. They got the better hardware. They got Game Pass, which I think is a really interesting thing. They've good. got games that you can play whether you're on Xbox or PC. The one thing that they're missing, like Destin said, is like those really strong exclusives. Mm-hmm. I'm really like excited. I was really Mass excited. And Gears and- yeah. That's true. They used to have huge titles. And even COD had that one month, one month exclusivity, which made it the competitive console. So people kind of went towards Xbox to play that. And now um, Activision and Sony are best buds. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was excited when I heard they've got the studio that made Hellblade. Because Hellblade oh, yeah. was a, such an amazing game, yeah. And yeah. I'm I'm really excited to see what they do because the way that they created that game was so unique and such a unique experience. So I'm really excited to see what else they do, and I'll definitely be picking it up if it's mm-hmm. on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. it's nice to well, know that it's, nice it's moving too, forward. Is that you can play Microsoft games whether you have a PC or an Xbox. Like it's very true. Yeah, yeah. And as again, soon as they do that, Microsoft wins. By the way, play yeah, that's well, true. as soon as they do that, PlayStation's going to announce cross save. <laughs> cool. Cross save that's on that's, all that's, of what, our that's games. what's going to allow them to do that. that. That's what's going to force them to do that. So, in a way, I like the competition and I like to see innovation and change. I think every generation, customer, the leader in the industry is be, 
been somebody different, whether it's Nintendo or Sony with the PlayStation 2 or Microsoft with Xbox 360. Sony not putting that stuff into games. That's going to gamers are going to remember that when it comes time to buy another, you know, console in 2020, whenever they come out. Right. I'm looking at the PlayStation 5. I'm looking at the Xbox 2, whatever it's called. And I'm thinking, well, if I play, if I buy an Xbox, I could play Fortnite 2 with all my friends, no matter what console they're on. If I buy a PlayStation, I'm going to be locked into PlayStation again. People are going to remember that. They're going to listen that up. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that stuff sticks. Like even after they've changed it, like the Microsoft press conference from 2013, when Sony came out and was making fun of them for how to share games, right? Yeah. Like that stuff sticks even after you've changed your policy on it. Like people just have, remember that. Look at what Destiny's going through. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Destiny's got, a good example. They got, a, they got a uphill battle to win back the people that feel burned. I hope uh, what they're doing, as you look for the next question, I hope what they're doing is that they're setting up for their PS5 reveal in a few years and just getting a killer library to launch that console. God of War is my game of the year. Yeah. Um, followed by potentially Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I don't want to see Sony fail. Competition is good. Competition yes. breeds create creative new IPs, exactly. creative projects, and we all win when that's happening. Hundred percent. Yep. Um, Dustin, do you have any kind of like? Have, has there been buzz about when the new consoles are going to come out? Has there been? There's any room, kind of pe- people are saying 2020, but that's just a rumor. Like, there's no good source on that or anything. But that's just what I've seen on Twitter and such. Uh, I, I'm really particular about making sure sources are vetted. But yeah, I, I like I haven't heard anything personally. Uh, I lost my place. Sparty for you says with Black Armory, will there there will per- presumably be a power level increase? What would you like to be the soft cap, hard cap, and raid levels be? Hmm. I think 700 would be a good start. No, I don't know. <laughs> what are we at right now? It's 600, right? 600. Mm-hmm. I don't think the numbers actually matter. It just matters how Bungie chooses to tune how fast you get to those numbers, right? It's like It could be a 20-point increase, but if it takes True. 40 hours to get each one of those points, like it's going to be a really hardcore grind if it takes one hour to get each one of those points and it's going to be easy right it doesn't really matter the number it matters how how bungie tunes that ramp it's very true i think it's also 8, how 000. they tune how you get 8, 000. it 8, i want to be power level nine thousand before destiny maybe it's unlimited out. maybe there's an unlimited <laughs> level they Ooh, just lift Paragon. it you just keep on going i would like that actually <laughs> keep on specking like into fall, more and more points three made that mistake where you could hit a level cap and then there was no way to further advance and they said that was a mistake and they also made the game where it just ended and you couldn't keep continue leveling i wonder if destiny would benefit from not having a cap like how could they make that work for it wouldn't be for destiny 2 they're still in the old leveling model this would be like forward thinking. So in Destiny Three, I could see something like that if they if they had a, yeah. a lot more diverse RPG system in the sandbox. Again, wasn't so heavily focused on pure damage. Like they really could take something like the Diablo Three Paragon route, where once you've unlocked those skills, you then start incrementally growing as you put time and stuff into yours. The levels in Destiny seem so arbitrary too. You got to level do. up your light level now, and then you have a power level. And in D1, it was sort of the same thing. You had a level, and then you have a power level. It's it's just like they haven't gotten figured out what they want to do with that yet. So they, they haven't evolved that system. I want them to get rid of the levels and just do pure, yeah, like, pure light level. Yeah. I would love that. Or power level, whatever people call it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we have I a 600 one. I just want that. Yeah, what's it going to be called in D3? Better. Metallic levels in D3. <laughs> I, would, I would love light level. <laughs> I think light level sounds better. It makes yeah. more sense. I like me. light level. Light level is better. Definitely. Light, more know. personal to Destiny too. It is. Yeah. yeah. Power uh, level makes more sense. No, I'm just kidding. No, Augusta Slice level. says, do you think the galley will be a guaranteed pre-order bonus for Destiny 3? No. No. Nope. Who's to say galley's not coming in the next six months? All right. Oh, it's definitely coming. <laughs> Black Armory. They did the whole back in black marketing campaign. For there you go. The pre-order bonus. We're gonna have Galahorn the black galley. What if we instead of Rise of Iron, we get Rise of Galahorn? 
in September. You know what I hate more than anything <laughs> that I could see some of these things coming to fruition. <laughs> 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 the pre-orders for Galley. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Can actually do that. I don't want to be playing with the same fucking guns I've played yeah, with for right? the last four years. I especially don't want them to be the best guns, so I'm almost forced to play with them. Yeah, like, that's, why, that's why I'm really excited about Black Armory, because it's so heavily focused on weapons, like these mm -hmm. weapons of the Golden Age, these mysterious things from this armory that was crazy. So I'm really hoping they knock it out of the park with just some really weird and crazy new powerful, stuff. Yeah. Yes. New, new stuff. That new, new. New, new, new. I, I have a question for everybody on the show. Looking forward to Destiny 3. What do they do? Do they just let your weapons carry over? Do they nuke the weapon supply and just create brand new stuff and all the old stuff is just left by the wayside? Because they are special, right? They have a yeah, special place in our memory and, and we had a good everything. time with it. They have fantastic lore. What do they do going forward? I, was, I didn't like this in D2 when we effectively hit the reset button because, you know, I, I have invested time into this character. And if the only thing that carries over is just that, that appearance, which apparently didn't mean anything because I swapped over to PC, um, mm -hmm. you know, do, doing that continually to the player base, I feel like that doesn't put, it doesn't put good faith it into lowers them. the stakes. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, well, well, why should I bother trying to go for all this stuff in the game? Why? It's going to take it away from me in a year. That and then they took that chance with D two. We saw what happened. Like, mm -hmm. like so. Now if the tower gets blown up, I'm like, oh, that's their storyline narrative to mm -hmm. take away all our stuff again. I honestly feel it's like they're going to do that again. Scions. Vex taking scions. They're, they're coming in and stealing all our weapons. I yeah. wonder if they'll have to do it again because of how they've fractured the player base by launching PC. I think they're going to have to do it again in order to make a sandbox that's going to be a lot different in an RPG sense. See, that's what I'm looking to is if they are going down this road of making it almost a completely different game and being more RPG based, then I think they kind of have to get rid of everything and start again. Yeah. Because I personally would like to keep my stuff, but yeah, I don't want the sandbox to be just slightly different. I want it to be a really interesting new sandbox. And I think that's going to require a real reshape of all the inventory in the game. Personally. I say scorched earth. Just blast it all. <laughs> yeah. And all we get to keep is Telesto. <laughs> One coveted <laughs> golden Telesto rises from the ashes. <laughs> Can you imagine if they did do that where you had to choose one gun that your guardian happened to be carrying when like Earth blew up? So you did get to bring one gun. Like how hard it. that decision would make. That would be actually be a really cool thing. I know that's really hard because then they have to make every single weapon in the new game. And maybe some people don't pick that. But that would be really cool because then that gun really means something to you going into the next game. That would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. What's the next game? Sorry, Holtz, go ahead. Yeah, now, now that you think about that, why the hell did my guardian go off to do whatever the hell he was doing at the start of D two to go only with a sidearm? <laughs> <laughs> he had a premonition. He was like, "I'm not gonna need this. I'm not gonna need, I don't need this." this I, excuse, I didn't. I didn't go anywhere without my icebreaker. <laughs> it blew up. It got volatile. It finally that perk finally kicked in. You tried to shoot it. <laughs> got to <laughs> yeah, it misfired and boom, whole gun blew up. Uh, yeah. I was going to say also, uh, Briar, you brought up the point, like what it does to the community or to the population, I, sh I should say, about collecting stuff. And I am personally feeling that right now. Like I am less interested in making sure I have everything because I just know they're going to get rid of a bunch of stuff later on yeah. and it's not going to matter. And I'm like, all right, well, if I went and got the, the Luna's Howl as a collector, if I knew it was going to stay... Right. If, yeah, if I knew it was going to continue with me throughout like the, the lifespan of the franchise, then I would have way more interest in making sure I have everything. But knowing that there's a reset button a, like looming over the horizon, I'm kind of like, well, it's okay. Whatever. And honestly, it's healthier, personally, that I have this feeling now. Maybe, right? Yeah. Maybe. I, I totally agree with that. And unfortunately, when I realized that, it took something away from what was special about Destiny. Because I'm just like, oh, like, there's gonna, like, who cares how much I get in Destiny 2? Because 
all this will be meaningless by the time Destiny Three comes out. Yeah. Why? Why should I bother spending money on these uh, on these Eververse things? Because I need, gonna fucking go away. I yeah, need the cat right? ghost, Patrick. I need the cat ghost now until D three comes out. It says meow when you pull it out. Meow. Meow. <laughs> 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 I need that. Uh, Sebastian says Gambit is classified as competitive co-op when you select it. Should the playlist come with a ranking system like other competitive mo game modes to reflect its nature? Maybe it have does. the matchmaking adjust to that as well? It, it does. It does. Next question. Or does Next it? question coming. Because a lot of people... No, it does literally to all of that. So Yeah. A lot of people are saying that they're going up against new players as 5500s. Hmm? Oh, so in comp, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So the way the matchmaking works is this was all detailed in some stuff a while back, but it looks it is going to look for a proper match for you. If it cannot find one within a certain amount of time, it will expand the like quality of player to either to be both above and below you. If you're at 5500, it's only going one direction. So right. eventually, if those like four stacks, because if you're at 5,500, you are queuing as a four stack. You're not queuing like solo at that bracket. Um, you are going but to why eventually. Not? Huh? But why not? Because you like you can't. It, you cannot at 5,500. If your expectation is to win, you cannot do that solo. What if you because, get what if you get good? Uh, yeah, you can you be as out? good. You can be as good of a player as you can possibly be. There will be four. <laughs> Equally as good people also communicating with each other. On the or you team. could get gooder. Uh, they, <laughs> then, Whoa. then by extension, <laughs> those other people will be gooder as well. So, How about you just don't take damage? You know, that, that works too. Yeah, just don't get hit. Don't get what hit. if we tried right. killing them before they kill us? <laughs> just, don't, just don't miss your shots. Yeah, that works. I, but, I'm sure the answer is no, but did anybody in this group not like Gambit that much? Um, for a period I, of time, I, I really liked it, but I, after like a hundred games, I'm like, I get it. I I've got it down really well. I've lost a few. I've won a few. They've been close. Um, but I there's no, I don't know. There's nothing else to do. Like I, I get the whole mode. Yeah. What if there's, there's a, a pinnacle gambit weapon? Do you want to play it more? Yeah, I would that's, hop in for the pinnacle gambit weapon. That, but yeah, when that's I thing is, I'll, <laughs> I'll go for pursuits. The problem was for me, like I, I burnt myself out on it doing uh, Gambit uh, when I was trying to get power like or, you know, get to 600. Yeah, uh, I too. played Gambit on all three of my characters uh, for all of the powerful rewards. Every like every single possible powerful source that you could get from Gambit. I did. You also played it for like 15 hours trying to get the malfeasance. Yes, I know. yes, I did that, too. And then <laughs> for an additional like 10 hours after that. So like I in the first like five weeks, I played a fuck ton of Gambit and I got mm -hmm. burnt out on it. Um, I, so I, yeah, like I still like the game mode. It's just, you know, trying to get me to go back in. It's like, ah, I do have Queen Breaker, which makes it very fun. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. that'll do it. Mm -hmm. That makes you. I would definitely go play Gambit if I had Queen Breaker, too. It's <laughs> Gambit is great. It doesn't have that special sauce that Trials D1 had. And no. nothing has that special sauce that Trials D1 had. Yeah. No. And I really like special sauce. Trials was so original. <laughs> Trials was such a huge deal for Destiny. Yeah. When I when I played it at Bungie and we were doing our preview article, I said, I think I wanted to say something like, this is going to change the pace of PvP. And I, I could bring up my article. I don't remember what I said exactly, but it, it it's so like good. one of the best modes I've ever played. And D2 Trials missed the mark. I think... And Bungie doesn't know what made trial special. I think people it would I think it would actually be really helpful for Bungie if people contacted them in a constructive way and explained what made it special to them. Was it the fact that it was kind of a mini tournament that you could do in, you know, an hour? Was it the weapons? Was it the armor that you could get? Was it the lighthouse? What was it that made trial specifically feel so exciting to watch and play and made it special? Was it the game mode? The game mode was part of it. 
The game mode was definitely part of it. The game, the game mode made it exciting because you had that thing that came up, and you had, if you were one player against three other players, you actually had a chance during that cap zone moment to do something crazy. Yeah, I found it. Was it. Very Trials watchable. of Osiris redefines PvP, is what I said. It was so good. Yeah, the thing that happened at that time was there had never been a looter shooter, first person looter shooter, that had a mode that was that felt competitive like that that had rare rewards that were associated with accomplishing, like, essentially the wins. I think all those combined made it for a very exciting yeah. game mode to, like, play and watch. And when D2 came out, it was like they took away half of that, essentially. It felt like half of it they, was gone. They changed the game mode completely. They took away Trials at the worst possible time they could have taken away Trials from D1 because that's when the Battle Royale genre was just getting started and everybody was trying out this new game mode and... They had something really, really slick, really, really cool. And they just shut it off. They just pulled the plug on it. And they're like, you got to wait a few months. And in those few months, we're all playing PUBG. We're all playing Fortnite. Now, Fortnite's this gargantuan monster. PUBG's still around, but it's not what it was in its heyday. And Trials never came back in the way that we loved it. It's still good. I'm not saying it's a terrible game mode or anything like that, but it's not that D1 Trials. So... If, if you're Bungie and say Bungie has comp now, comp wasn't even a thing in D1. Yeah. If, and they're, we'll say if they're feeling confused about how does Trials fit into this ecosystem now that we have quick playing, we have comp, and we have this pinnacle weapon. How do we fit Trials into the current ecosystem that makes it feel special and exciting? You make a new ecosystem, to be honest. Like you you yeah. got to make it 3v3 again. Four is just too many, I think. It, it was just, the, yeah. it was perfect. It was. It was it as was. close to perfect as it are. Like, okay, there were sticky grenade problems, and what was the other one? Shoulder charge. There was sandbox problems, but I think as a mode and as a reward and all that, I think they got it really good. And getting to go to this special place that you can yeah. only go to. It was a you huge part of it. Completed the entirety of the card. It had mystery. People wanted to be yeah. part of that conversation and check out those rewards every week. Exactly. And like that. I, the gameplay was high octane. Trials, man. Prestige involved in getting there and wearing that armor around. Badge of arm badge of honor if you made it. Yeah. Sorry. I think I Charles totally has a place. Like even if we just have comp and quick play, I think it totally has a place because it's not comp at all. Comp is a like potential month-long grind to get this thing at the end trials was this very short you could kind of feel like you're in a tournament type situation and you go up against other players and you get something at the end of an hour it's not a month-long thing that nails it for me watches it felt like i was playing in like a competitive pvp tournament for an hour right. or two like yeah. it really it made me feel like i was a competitive player for an hour it was amazing yeah. I think it can totally fit even into the current ecosystem. Make the armor unique, make it cool, add lore to it so we find out more about either the Nine or <laughs> the Trials of Osiris, whatever yeah. you want to do. But add lore to it, make it interesting to go there, make the weapons and armor look different and exciting. Bring back 3v3. I just say bring back 3v3 elimination. I think elimination was fun. Having yeah. 3v3 would also fit it into a place of you have 6v6, you have 4v4, and you have 3v3. So you're getting a slightly different experience. You know what Even else they should do? Even if it was 4v4, why the hell didn't they bring back a limb? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's baffling. I don't know. Totally yeah. baffling. It was such a good mode. Yeah. They should also the new modes have, just aren't as much fun. If it was in 3v3, they should have each character come up on the screen one by one and have a full breakdown of their entire Destiny career and everything they've done, every single challenge they've accomplished. Every emote they've ever every bought. Every emote and, that they've bought, all the purchases yeah. right there, and just slowly yeah. go through each one. Test how much money I've spent on everything. So you have <laughs> at, at so least five my... minutes in between by the time you load up the match and actually play it. I think that'd really get you into the mood, don't you think? Yeah, that would definitely do it. Yeah. Definitely. It needs to have Spot its own on. unique mode. It can't be comp, but slightly different. <laughs> no, it elimination. Bring back down. elimination. <laughs> Its own unique mode. Have it. You could even have it be. Uh, some people in chat were saying have it be around for a week, but only happen once a month. So it's like this kind of special tournament that comes to town where you can get some really oh. cool mm. loot. Trials I think there's a place for it. Up. I want. Trials well, that's what Iron Banner is, right? It is. Yeah. It's just not exciting. It's not a tournament. But Iron Banner just feels like regular PvP. Because it's it is regular PvP. It's just it got skill based matchmaking. Regular, regular <laughs> PvP with skill based matchmaking. It's great. Uh, Trials would be its own unique mode in a 
tournament. Iron Banner is really close to being great, but now I sign on, I'm like, oh, I have all the armor. All right, bye. <laughs> it, I got everything so fast. Um, but have you completed every single bounty on every single character in one event? Why? Because there's a triumph for that. <laughs> well, I don't want to put myself I don't care. through that. I honestly, the, the triumph system, I don't care that much. <laughs> I, I appreciate that they did that for really hardcore players, but I'm just like, so what? I got to fill in a circle in my book? Yeah, you get you get to have the satisfaction <laughs> fair, of fair of point. of creating what it would be fifty. It's like one hundred and fifty orbs over Iron Banner on three separate characters. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't count masterwork weapons, so it's literally you have to do them with your super. Wow. What if there was a title of Iron Lord if you did it all? Okay, yeah, I'd do it. What? I've already <laughs> been an Iron Lord. You but take that you away from me. Title <laughs> on your name, Briar. So then, when when Lord Saladin sees you next time, he'll know. I was already an Iron Lord. Lord Saladin <laughs> doesn't say shit about it. <laughs> he doesn't you even don't know my name. Title. You forgot, man. <laughs> you need the How do you forget that? It was only a year ago. That's why they're always doing this nostalgia shit because they forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, what if you could pay like a hundred dollars? And get a a, a paperweight. Mm, when's the anthem come out? <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of anthem, there was gameplay shown, right? New stuff. Customization, yeah. Uh, the customization is disgustingly robust. It is really, really intriguing. They let you customize so much in that game. Uh, they have color maps and texture maps and uh, really. You can basically make N7 armor if you want. Really? That's cool. Yeah. I'm assuming there's going to be microtransactions for this stuff, right? Have they already talked about that? Or is it? They said they weren't talking about it on today's stream, but dang. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. yeah. there will definitely be microtransactions. But when you can literally <laughs> just paint your armor to be whatever the hell you want. That's really cool. Why? That, that why is buy exciting. It? Yeah. That's it. You know, one thing that Warframe does the, with microtransactions that I. I personally really like is that they they have uh, community submissions and the people who do get selected it becomes uh, a part of the game and they actually get a cut so when like people oh, buy wow. a skin for a warframe i didn't know they did that that's awesome yeah the, cr that's the creator cool. gets a cut of that as well and i i think that's i personally i think that's awesome like yeah no that's amazing doesn't, doesn't steam do that also steam gets a yeah but like this yeah. this will go across with um the consoles and everything like they they share revenue with people who uh i believe that's it's really i cool. believe it's with uh the console stuff too because it becomes that's part cool. of the game and they can buy it with uh the platinum yeah, just that's that's to do that too with their creator club they got in a little bit of heat i don't remember why exactly but uh they do they were but, trying to sell stuff on the internet the nerve they were trying to sell stuff Jesus. that other people had Did they try to make a profit free. unbelievable that's what it was <laughs> That they had made, but they weren't sharing it with the creator. They still, I don't remember what it was. It was something like that, though. Uh, the elusive says, have any of you ever played with someone or seen someone in the game no. world with a gamer tag no. or they did something that Never. just made you bust out laughing? For me, it was a dude with the name Chuck Norris, MD. <laughs> I laughed my ass off when I saw it. You guys ever seen a name or seen somebody do something in game that just made you laugh? I laugh at names like all the time. I mean, we were playing with Richard yeah. Nixon the other day in the strike. <laughs> it was like, Richard Nixon's down, guys. No. <laughs> so a Hobbit Weed 420. I laughed for about a year about that nice. one. That was, that's really great. <laughs> it's even better on PC because people have uh, some more interesting names there. Seems yeah. to be a little bit more freedom in yeah. what you can do. Too much, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's it's Cod Emblem Creator all over again. It's just uh -uh. remember uh in destiny one when we first went to the reef there was that area that you could jump off of like the platform in the reef and land under mm -hmm. the reef but mm -hmm. and you'd be safe yes. but there's it's just a speck that you had to nail with that jump i remember just watching people just do it over and <laughs> over and over again just dying and dying that used to make me laugh i used to like try to push people off of that too like you could push people off of the front of the reef with mm -hmm. the ball that was fun. Oh, nice. You could push NPCs off. It was great. I'm sure I've seen some funny names, but I can't think of anything in particular. Um, 
there was I heard the, I don't know why the story sticks with me, but it, like back in D one, early D one, there I read this Reddit post about Space Jesus, and the gamer tag was Space <laughs> Jesus, and like the team was looking for a sixth person to join Vault of Glass, and Space Jesus responded, but Space Jesus had no microphone, but ended up being the best player and like clutched the end of an Atheon kill. It was like oh wow. Damn. It was like Space Jesus came and then left. He's Space Jesus. <laughs> wow. Space Jesus walked off into the sunset. Yeah, and that that like post like still sticks with me to this day thinking about that. Oh, Space Jesus. Uh Chris Cantilano says I have one question with the rest of DCP completing their promises for the charity stream and Pope and Holtz not He actually misspells Holtz. I don't actually think he knows how to spell your name. No, not completing their promises. Will it affect future charity streams if the community knows that DCP isn't completing what they promised? Hmm. It's a Good question. question. <laughs> yes. That's heavy, man. Yeah. I minus. Well, I don't have to answer your account. <laughs> no answer, guys. You're just gonna take silence. Getting here? the fucking tattoo. Sure, <laughs> Christ. Are you though? Yes. <laughs> Are you growing your hair out for a mullet? Oh my god! I could just, just leave this call right country. now, and it would fuck up the entire like stream. But you'd also solidify that question. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah. We know where the weak link is here. There are hey. two butt tattoos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pope. There's two butts. <laughs> I've been ready and willing. Uh, Dan is alive. Says, if you went to Neverland right now, would you side with the Lost Boys or the Pirates? Oh, I thought we were talking about Michael Jackson right now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Pirates. I mean, the Lost Boys could fly. Yeah, I'm a fly. Only Peter Pan. Why would you side Boys. with the Pirates? The Lost Boys the get all the food they can imagine, like the Lost mm. Boys, of course. Have you read the original mm. Peter Pan novel? No. We're going probably. with the Disney version. Oh, it's bullshit. Disney. No. 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 We Can you go, give us we, a brief history on why you would not choose the Lost Boys, Pan? Uh the Lost Boy basically Peter Pan didn't understand that people grew up and like people needed to eat and all the stuff. He was basically uh, uh, trapped in like a child's mind inside his head. Uh so like the Lost Boys were basically horribly, horribly abused by uh by Peter Pan and most of the pirates ended up being lost boys that were able to actually escape Peter Pan. And oh. like the, the story is really fucking dark. And Why you want to be the pirates in that movie? universe. What were they thinking? See, there's a lot of stories like that from Disney that were pretty dark that then oh, come yeah. forward and like Cinderella. have to like, Disney fight. Yeah, get Disney fight. And I'm going to go with the Disney fight version because it did me, you know? Yeah, you I want to fly with the Lost Boys. Yeah, fuck Holtz's version of this awful story. Yeah, we're not getting, <laughs> we're not getting rooted in the real world here. Come on. We're going to, yeah. Uh, Evan Meyer says, and the most important question of the year is, what's your game of the year? God of War. That might be mine, too. Red Dead is really good, but I think I like God of War better for it. Red Dead gets best story for me. Ooh. God of War is probably, that. that's is that, like, who's who's finished Red Dead, though? I haven't completely finished, I finished it. There's some. Hopefully soon. If Some Red Dead controlled down. well or decent, it'd probably be higher for That's me. That's your reason why it's not game the, of year? The controls in that game are awful. God of War definitely controlled better. 100%. No doubt about it. It's fantastic. Control. Every game controls better. <laughs> Gameplay God of War story might slightly be Red Dead, but the game for me is God of War. Huh. What, what, what if got? I said Monster Hunter World? I get because that. if I think about the hours that I put into that game and how in love I was with the gameplay loop of just killing monsters and making mm -hmm. armor and weapons and that game just it it captured the grindy RPG player in me and I loved everything about it. Yeah, that that was a yeah. game that I mean, lots you you heard me complain about it. I was like, I don't like this game. I just genuinely don't like this game. And then like a week later, I'm like, I can't stop playing this game. Help. I'm having entirely too much fun. It was, it was a very difficult game to get through because it did not 
tell you anything about the, the underlying systems and the story was absolutely awful. Like I, I have no idea what happened. All I know is that we I didn't care monsters. at any point what happened. In that yeah, story. Like, yeah, we need we need you to go research these monsters, and then I am just like <laughs> hacking off bits of them. And like, is this <laughs> what we do to research? We just kill everything. All right, America. Yeah, I'm like this is a this is a commentary on the <laughs> Westernization of cultures and how we must destroy everything to properly understand it. If I was making a top ten list, I'd fight strong for Assassin's Creed Odyssey to be in like in a top three or top five too. I really like that. Odyssey game. was really good. That's a good one for yeah. top five. Yeah. Yeah. I finished that. Oops. Also before Oops Red Dead. So quiet. Got that serious look in his eyes. Who me? Yeah. It's a good yeah, idea, no. dude. I'm just enjoying the conversations. Um I um you know, I get the time that I get to play, I get to play Destiny. Mm -hmm. um i really enjoyed black ops and uh haven't really had much time to play anything else so black ops is really good this year for me i really am enjoying the the open world like the i, I don't like battle royales and for me dropping in and playing i black ops if i had more time i would play the crap out of red dead that looks right up my alley i would just just destroy that game but i just okay. know that i won't have the time to play it and to really enjoy it so i enjoy watching it stream uh, one of your like two week breaks though maybe or maybe over yeah, the summer you're, you know when you have a good father time. and family <laughs> member hope makes all sorts of bad decisions story and try and forget <laughs> the side i am thing. enjoying i enjoy watching people stream uh the games that i like that i would like to play um knowing that i don't have the time to play them uh, when I get a chance during the summer, the two games that I am definitely going to play are going to be Red Dead. And um, I I, I want to go back and um, I'd love to try Assassin's Creed, but I don't have the time to do a Red Dead and an Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that'd be a strong, that'd be a lot of time, especially so, if you do get Red Dead, get through chapter two and yeah, if it's not. You, I want to admit this. I, I want to go back and I want to actually finish play the through the whole thing of God of War. I didn't get a chance to finish all of it. Um, I played about half of it. It was really good. I enjoyed it and I'd love to go back and and I was playing it at Patrick's house. Yeah, you, you bought save, it and like played. the save yeah. didn't transfer over. Mm. And, then oh, I just said, brutal. and then I said screw it and I didn't oh. I didn't play it after that. What do you mean you played half of it? Then you played like an hour of it here. Yeah, nope. it's like half. It's like half. It's like half He's of the good, man. He's really good. Man. What happens? I, yeah. Hope is ascended to get good. You played it on the hardest <laughs> setting. Got through half of it as, in an hour. As a dad, I'm surprised you didn't connect more with God of War. Oh, he connected with no it. Life no, he, 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 I liked it. I really liked yeah. it. I, 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 would, I would play the crap out of it. Um, but, you know, when I spend, when if I took a look at what Watt said, how much time I've spent of my time that I, that it, that I get to play video games, which is extremely valuable to me. Like it's very limited. Destiny would have to be my game. <laughs> like I think forsaken all of my time forsaken into that game. And it, and it keeps me going back. I, I, I have a chance I have on my, I still haven't played this, the expansion of, uh, um, what was the, the monsters you could shoot and tie them to the ground and, in Destiny? No, it was a, a, a female male lead, female lead. You know what was the? Oh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, Horizon oh, Zero dude, Dawn. I still yeah. haven't. I, I still couldn't haven't remember finished. the name of that game. Really. I yeah. I couldn't finish the. Uh, I haven't finished the expansion of that. I'd really want to go back and play that. Um, I've bought more games and haven't played and finished any of them. A pile so, of shame. Listen, and it's it, you it is. are it's not required I, to finish any game that you start. Like you could wait, play. What? Listen, you can play. As much as you want, and then when you feel like you got to move on, do some other stuff. I think that's perfectly fine. Like, have you ever had that game is The Witcher Three? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's it's okay, guys. <laughs> Are you serious? You're not like every week. I get three new games that I'm supposed to do capture for. I have played a ton of games and not finished them. <laughs> like, hey, we got Civ on the Switch. Can you get games? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, for the record like game, games i'm not into games i'm really into like right now i want to play fallout 76 don't have time mm -hmm. yeah, I check i've been that trying for too. three days and i still haven't had another moment 
For the well, record, for the I just re- want to point out that I have finished quite a few games on stream. All right. Some I haven't, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong it's with okay. that. All right. If you're not feeling it anymore and you want to move on or something happens in Destiny and you're like really invested yeah. in it, it's okay. Maybe it's the time was finished, wrong. I finished God of War, Far Cry 5. Uh, oh, that's Red, another and, one I wanted to Red play. And Red Dead this year. Mm. Far Cry 5 is your popcorn game, man. It's And I wanted to play, um, I wanted to play the, Nathan, Far Cry the Nathan Drake 5. series. I really wanted to play the new one. Um, Uncharted. Yeah. Uncharted. Uncharted. Man, I, there are so many games. If I had, like, oh, yeah, it's good times, man, though. But, like, to be honest with you, like, the there is no game that grabs me like Destiny. And, 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 and if you think about it, I get six to ten hours a week to play. And when I sit down at my console, I can play anything I want, right? I choose to play that. That says a lot to me. Yeah. I think that's, like, it's comfort. Part of it's comfort, right? You know the game. You know you can hop in and get that little. You don't have to learn any mechanics or. You don't. One of the designers described to me is like it's like a snack. You can hop in. You can do a strike. You can do a thing, and you feel like you've made progress, right? So you get that little snack of progress. Yeah, that's how Call of Duty (laughs) used to feel for me. Yes, I agree. You play like one match. You get some COD points. Maybe you unlock like a sight or a grip for your gun and. Uh, I'm enjoying the hell out of Blackout. I'm, I, I don't know. I, people have given it crap, and I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I won my first. Um, I won the very first, the second game I played. I won, won it, and I spoiled the sh- crap out of myself because the next like fifteen, I didn't even like land and find a gun. And then, it's a good um, game mode. It's fun. And then I won another one, and it was this epic moment. And I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the yeah. hell out of it. That game They're regular life. multiplayer very addicting. Good too. So we're doing yeah. game of the year conversations at IGN right now. I actually found my list of the games that I like say should be considered. Far Cry 5, God of War, Kingdom Come Deliverance way earlier in the year. Really? Redemption 2, Monster Hunter World, Octopath, Octopath Traveler, Traveler. on the Switch. Yeah. yeah. No Man's Sky, Forza Horizon 4, Destiny 2 Forsaken, Soul Calibur 6 for fighting game. Hmm. And I almost said Battlefield 5, but then it came out. Kingdom Come <laughs> Deliverance. Didn't that game basically ship broken? That was made by a really, really small independent studio. And for me, I like rooting for the little guy. And that fact that they committed to a vision and launched that product in the state that it was in. And a lot of people really, really liked what they were able to do there. Yeah. Has yeah. it been pretty much all fixed? There's some up? controversy with it, but uh yeah, they're continuing to support it. It's sort yeah. of like what they did with No Man's Sky, you know, like the studio is going to continue oh, to support that product. No Man's Sky has had a transformative year. It's almost like Destiny. It's so slots. different. It's a completely yeah, it's, different game almost. It, there's still bugs and stuff like that, but... It's multiplayer? Like, yeah, it's multiplayer now, and it's third person, and weirdly, switching to third person really adds a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a huge graphic overhaul. They've been continually supporting it quietly in the background while everybody else is being laughing at them and making up memes and just kind of pooping all over hello games um it seems a lot like another game in studio that, yeah and yeah. they're both up for best ongoing game yeah, that's oh. right yeah. yeah for for the game awards they are yeah what did you think yeah. of uh dead cells i got a proper release this year i didn't play it there was a ton of controversy at ign because of the plagiarism and uh i was like out when all that went down i was like on a business trip and somewhere else so i come back and i'm like oh everything's on fire okay and uh and uh yeah so i just never played it i wasn't involved with capture anything that's too bad uh it's honestly one of my favorite indie games of all time like that game it's so good yeah from the arts it is amazing the music it's it's up for the gameplay yeah like for rogue vania Metroid Rogue type of stuff. Like it's an incredible game. I want to. I can't wait to see what else they do with it. Personally, it's it sucks for me to see that the enjoyment of that game will forever be tarnished at IGN because of the controversy surrounding it. And That's that too bad. Yeah, makes me that makes me more. Is mad that the game that dude wrote about? That like, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people still love it, and it's still up for consideration. But for me, my my memory, not having played it, will be that. It caused it's the game that caused all that crap. 
And yeah. No, it's the jackass who plagiarized. You're accurate. Caused yeah. all that crap. The game, unfortunately, no, no, no. was the collateral of that, right? I, I appreciate you correcting me. Yeah. Yes, it's not. I know that's what you. Fault. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're, uh, that's th- too bad that they're, yeah they got that yeah. because that that game has been crafted really with a lot of love. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. and you can tell. It was amazing. Yeah, it's just for me personally. Everybody else in the office is still voting for it and think it's fantastic. So mm-hmm. yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dreadnought says, hey, DCP, my finals are coming in a few weeks. Any advice on how to cheat on a test? Or better yes. yet, have you ever cheated on a test? If yeah. so, how? Yeah. Uh, Hope you want to answer this one first? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can definitely get into this. Take the L. If you Ooh, need to cheat. Bad advice from Pope. That is again. not how you cheat. <laughs> the reality, the reality of the situation is... If that's how you are going to get ahead, then you're going to end up plagiarizing articles and taking that and and putting a black eye on a company that otherwise has hardworking people. Or, or, or you cheat your way through 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 life, yeah, and become the president like George Bush. (laughs) No, 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 no. no. There, there, there are legitimate great ways to do this. All right, so you got to scout out the room that you're taking the test first. Um, Do you guys uh, see surveillance? Do you guys see? Uh, Trump studying for tests. I don't see it, guys. Like it just doesn't. In my mind, I can't see him sitting down and really like buckling not, down, studying uh, for a test. I, Brian, That's we're not going to get into politics. He his way through. I want to. I want to hear Holtz's politics. blow by blow how he prepares for okay, a, te- a test test cheat. All right. Okay. So you got you got you got multiple options. Ha- First of all, have I ever cheated on a test? Yes, I te- I cheated on my AP statistics test, like the actual AP version of the test. Oh, um, you're gonna yeah. admit that publicly. What, are they gonna, what, the, what the fuck are they gonna do? I already got my degree. It's the bitches. internet, man. Gonna do? Oh, they're taking that right back. Okay, <laughs> fucking take it. I don't give a shit. You broke the honor code. A student who was caught cheating years after the fact. Had Fifteen a- years <laughs> ago, this kid cheated on a test. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, this, the guy that was sitting next to me was like really intelligent, and like I knew he was gonna pass the test. And they they told us beforehand, hey, all the tests are randomized. So you can't you can't look, and then of course that's going to make me be really inquisitive to see, hey, are they actually randomized? Oh, they weren't, and then I got a higher score than him, even though I copied him directly. <laughs> I don't know how that works. It's like one of the fill in the Shame. fill in the bubbles things. RNG. You forgot about that. Yeah, I guess. I got to oh. write up an IGN article really quick. One second. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamer outs himself as as, as, as I have told that story many many times. All right. Thanks. To the um, I can tell you that practice, practice how you play. Yeah, I, hey, I, I practiced if you for that test, and I knew I was fucked, and I still <laughs> tried to answer it. I still tried to answer those questions, and then I realized I had an out in that test, and I played my outs, and that's what video games have taught me. Live okay. life with integrity mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. every aspect. Mm-hmm. Even I think somebody is. I looking. thanked him. Afterwards, like, dude, <laughs> thank so you he, for he having that, for being alphabetically right after me. And, ultimately, mm-hmm. and he has come he clean. Who <laughs> has to look in the mirror every yeah. single day? I bought him. I bought and him. You have only your word. Cheeseburger for the wow. Was it a bacon baby? Do, do you guys know bacon, I'm bacon, actually taking classes right now? This is a really interesting question. I'm taking Java at CCSF. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just because I was bored. I wanted to learn more and like be a life learner. Uh, write some, if write you're some being code cheesy about it. Hell yeah! There's a reason why I like you, Dustin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are you about to admit it's, it's you? not worth it? It's a <laughs> on a piece of paper. No one's gonna fucking care. Mm-hmm. Like no one's gonna remember, and you're just gonna be like, oh yeah, I cheated my way through. You're not gonna get the education that you could have learned. I mean, like. The best it's experience. Why? Why the best you... experience I have is in college. I I plagiarized um, an article. It was a Shakespearean. It was a no, sh- class on Shakespeare. News. Copied Shakespeare. Unbelievable. Oh, I, I, I copied. Educator I, admits I to cheating. <laughs> Shakespeare's a really small, really, so really small. I was writer. in college. No so my, let me explain. <laughs> now you so know in my feel. first year. Of college, I had a, this class. It was this, uh, you know, beginning class, and I, I, I cheated on a, a test, uh, on a, on a paper, and I plagiarized a paper. And the professor called me in, and he asked me to, you know, explain to him, you know, what my thoughts were on it. And I couldn't, 
I couldn't give him the proper explanation of the paper. And he's like, why would you cheat? And he's like, and, and he just got, he just kind of dove into me. And, and, and I, I'm like, I just didn't feel like I, it was important enough. And he's like, all right. He's like, we'll talk about this later. But he said, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make you write a 10 page research paper on the ethics of the, the of, of the university, this university ethics policy. And it's not going to count for anything. But if you get an A in this class, I'll give you a C. If you get a B in this class, I'll give you a D. And if you get a C and I'll give you an F. And if you get an F, I'll, so I'll turn this into the ethics committee. He's like, you're going to work your ass off. And then by the end of it, you're going to learn what it means to be ethical. And I thank that professor for that busting my ass for an entire quarter and teaching me the importance of being able to say things in your own words and mean them and have a voice. And you got an F in that class. Right. <laughs> I got to see. And now you're the principal. I got to see in the <laughs> class and I would have earned an A, but a life lesson that I pulled from that was worth more than anything get they could ever given me. Don't get caught. <laughs> That's what like that you guys about. got. Look, okay, that okay. and then the actual serious way to cheat on the exam is actually going to help you learn about it too, all right? I'm, I'm being dead serious Just, about this. So you know like the paneling question? that they have? No, the paneling that they have in the ceiling? So okay. what you like it's usually like that kind of cork board stuff that has all the dots on it. What you got to do is you got to sneak into the room in, in an advanced time when no one else is there and you got to poke a bunch of holes into it, poke all a bunch of holes that's all your notes. And basically poking all the holes, you're going to have to memorize what you're poking the holes in the ceiling for because you can't like stand up there and like have a piece of paper it's going to flop down on your face so you have to remember it anyway so you're basically studying and then in case you can't remember because you were like too, like too hopped up on adrenaline or whatnot you can still always Red look bolt. up during the test yeah you can look up during the test and then see all the notes that you hopefully poked into the ceiling all right and you just, was... got, you just got you just got to go like <sighs> during the test and then look back down and you're good I've I think the reason genius, a lot of actually. students cheat, especially when you're a full-time student, you're like, I just got to get through this so that I can get to my break. But <laughs> don't do it. Just do the test. And if you're having that much trouble in class, why don't you drop it? Yeah. Maybe it's, yeah, a, a, good question. Maybe it's a bad fit. Yeah. I'm telling start, you that I, I had an, at my, my university, I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and it was a, it's a very good university. And I when I left that school, especially in the – 400, you know, the upper, upper division courses, when you're in a classroom with maybe 15 other people and it's you and the professor and you're discussing things, if you've bullshitted your way through college, it isn't going to mean jack shit because the reality of college isn't the grade, isn't the class, the statistics, it's being able to think. And if you've bullshitted your way through college, you have learned shit. And the reality is, is that the or only thing you ever leave? The only <laughs> thing you ever leave college skill. with is the ability to learn <laughs> and the ability to think critically. All right, so let's move on. No, 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 no. One last thing. I used Please, to. Please, Lord, let's move on. No, 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 no. This, this one's on. actually serious too. This helps. I would, um, I would write down. I would try to condense all my notes onto uh, to be able to write it down onto my hand. Yeah, we should but move on. Actually, we should definitely. No, no, no. This is fucking serious. This actually helps. Do that on the, a piece of paper. But yeah, look, this actually helps. If you try to condense all your notes down into the most important things and write them down onto your hand, because then you're That's actually trying to remember studying. what the most important things are. And then you just fucking wipe your hands off, okay? But the, the, the gist of the matter is you're supposed to be able to figure out what is important for the test, what needs to be remembered, and then you will probably remember that stuff anyway. All right, next question. Yeah. Hooded just remember, you must catch a guy has to get a tattoo on his ass. Yeah. <laughs> Hooded one says, you can only choose one hairstyle for the rest of your life. Do you go bald? Do you go Aldrin? Do you go Queen Mara? Or do you go Fran? Fran, definitely. Fran. <laughs> Fran, Fran. I'm Marabella? pretty sure Mara would choose Fran. Fran Marabella. Fran. 100% Fran. Yeah. I go France. I mean, I think I'm wearing it. <laughs> I think you are. There's not enough product in your hair right now, Destin, if that's what you're going for. No, he uses hairspray. I know I know his look. 
<laughs> Back there. <laughs> Inside dope on Fran. <laughs> Uh, Ringo the Dingo says, congrats on the 200th podcast episode. If you could change one thing you did or said in the last 200 episodes, what would that be? I probably wouldn't admit to cheating on my AP test. I feel like it's almost <laughs> time to uh, I would have deleted the Shake Your Fantasy video before Ryan caught hold of it on Plan Destiny. <laughs> But it's amazing. We still talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to live with it. You know, in hindsight, I should have deleted that baby. But it's great. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> I w- I'm glad you didn't take it off. <laughs> Me too. I can't think of anything. I can't think, you can't of, anything think of anything. Change. I can't think of anything. Mm. I don't. I don't really have many regrets or want to change things in general. You wouldn't change or would change. Wouldn't I generally? I, I, I generally just I live my life, things happen, I do stuff, it's all a part of me. So I just don't, I don't really have the mentality of looking back on anything and seeing it as a bad thing. I also have it's a really bad memory. Of the plan. Me too. I don't remember <laughs> yesterday. So, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> I don't remember anything I've said. I think when you're very in the moment, it's tough to have those reflective things and be like, what did I not like back then? You know. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember anything. <laughs> I don't have 200 episodes. Uh, I think I learned a lot making Fire Team Chat, though, a different show. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'd change, man. CJ's great. If I could have brought CJ I, on sooner, it would have been awesome. So the, the, I would have never the, brought CJ on. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, problem with, the problem with that question is that, like, the process of this is the journey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like... The mistakes are what you what allow you to learn and grow, right? And so this wouldn't be this without the mistakes. I mean, and the process. I mean, we wouldn't have Watts without me having issues where you know life issues where I had to dip out, and this show wouldn't be the same without her, right? Um, Patrick didn't bail on us to go, you know, spelunking, right? Mm-hmm. The show wouldn't be the same without us. You know, it's it's uh it's it's the it's all the ups and downs that make it what it is. And if there's a trying if you know so I wouldn't I, I wouldn't change anything. I definitely regret buying that sandwich in the airport when we went to the D two reveal. Like it <laughs> it it was it was sold to me as like a chicken wrap and it was like all cabbage. Ooh. And I having remember that, that. That was that was a one of my top five. Mine was also bad. Yeah. Just, like just pure lettuce. Yeah, it just mm. didn't. No sauce, like no flavor. Just, just. It like had like the sour taste. You know, to it I think that it. Patrick's trying to just get on my nerves right now. I'm, I'm trying to be real, you know, mm. be serious about things, and he's, he's, you know, it's just, it's working. Protheon says you get a million dollars, but every movie and show will be spoiled for you within ten minutes of watching it. Would you trade a million dollars, but every movie and TV show that you watch? Is going to be spoiled. This Here's how I yeah, okay. in a second, I would make my own movies. But am I living in California? Right? And Here's how I picture it. it loads of taxes. Is that I get a million dollars, but everything I watch is going to get spoiled. But there's also another guy who got a million dollars for spoiling all that shit. So every time I turn on a movie or TV show, this guy walks in the room, whispers in my ear, the dad dies and the mom's got the herpes. And then walks out, right? That's his only job. <laughs> that's, what he, that's just what he says to everything. I think this goes back to me having a terrible memory. And if it's in the first 10 minutes, I'm going to forget by the end. So <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> you still got video games, too. He doesn't mention video games. He doesn't mention video games. Just Ooh. play the video game version of movies, and you're fine. I never great. watch a movie again. Or read the book. I think. He also didn't. I hear the book's and never as good as the movie, though. So I'm going to go yeah, back. It's not that much in San Francisco, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna about to say, you can't, questioner. you can't even buy a house for that. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to revert back to I'm gonna revert back to last week, and I'll take the, the $20 pocket cash instead of the million bucks still. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. There was some math done after the podcast. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mm-hmm, Clearly, the twenty dollars pocket cash was the way I to go. Cheated yeah. on that my instinct was one hundred percent correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The bigger question, Briar, is that example that you gave. What kind of show are you watching? The wife's what got example? the herpes, and the, and the husband and dies. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the dog dies. I, I mean, what are you? Two random events. 
Uh, Honestly, okay. I'm I'm I'd take the million dollars because Pope spoils half the stuff anyway. Though, right, you know, spoil spoil Jesus. Yeah, that's true. Phoenix Randall says, if you had a choice between living in luxury and having all needs met, but you have to live with a crappy tech, no, nope. you have to live with crappy tech and gear, nope. better oh. internet, oh. or you get to live in the slums but have the latest and greatest, top notch, best tech gear, fastest internet speeds ever. What would you choose? Uh, slums. Man, if you live in the slums and you got all the best shit in your that house, somebody's just gonna, yeah, yeah, they're just gonna take that shit, and then you live in the slums and you got Jack's shit. Yeah, but I'm probably <laughs> surrounded by better food. Uh, if I have the latest, greatest tech, I mean that includes security. So, good point, mm. Dustin. I like it. Mm. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got have some the top interesting end home security. A nice Trump card there. Yeah. Can I, I think sell? Of one, Brian, can I create you? tech and sell it and then get out the slums? Because I think. Dude. Ooh. Latest Here's greatest tech you can put on that Iron Man shit that dude made at I MIT and you can just yeah. F up the you could make it not the slums. You could <laughs> like a it. you could clean up the slums. You could get the jetrifying yeah, the, the slums, slums man. Right <laughs> I mean, whatever I'm doing in the slums with all that great tech, it's just gonna be trying to get myself into this living in luxury and having all your needs met situation that I was already provided if I just didn't need all that tech. But now you have great internet. Yeah, but now you have shitty yeah. internet, Briar. But I have every other need met except for internet. So you're yeah. telling me that you're going to be happy with your Lamborghini go kart bumper car racing for the rest? <laughs> right. Of your you're going to have to call me on the phone to schedule uh, Ferrari Fridays. <laughs> no, you're going to you're gonna have to call <laughs> your person that takes your calls. <laughs> you're going to be. You're going to have to do this every time, Briar. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with the <real> shit. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? Who was old enough in this? You cut out, cut out, Pope. To remember what? Who remembers uh, rotary phones? Rotary phones. Oh, my grandma. Yeah, I mean, my I grandma used had one, one in a museum once. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were still we, on payphones. I feel like longer them. than Are they were in houses, thoughts? right? Like that's your only recollection. Uh, I, I never had one in my home. Yeah. Oh wow! My I feel grandma. like we had a very, we had a very early phone that was not rotary. My, my grandparents had the phone where you put the thing to your ear and you have to crank <laughs> it to call the operator yeah. in your house. That's my grandparents it. didn't have a phone, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, they had a rotary phone, but uh, they, they kept their old phone and they explained to me how it would work and my grandma worked in the op as an operator and would like really? plug in things. Totally uh, off, off topic. Patch and, patch yeah. and calls, yeah. Wait, 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 you're saying 95. that's off topic? Come on. Well, I mean, sorry, we're talking about this tech whole... and everything, but <laughs> okay. started thinking about rotary phones and stuff. That's true. Uh, I got three more questions. Let's go. Okay. Gavin Taylor says, I know the question between milk before or after cereal exists, but I saw my colleague what? go further beyond my by putting a spoonful of cereal into his mouth, chew, and then drink it from a glass of milk to finish chewing. Thoughts? Fucking no, monsters. Just why? <laughs> yeah, that's more work. That's more work, him on the side work right? Put, put him out of his misery. That's way more work. I hope he had a glass of milk and wasn't drinking the milk right out of the carton because you know there's all fucking cereal bits in that milk now. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Backwash like crazy. And so that sounds like no. a Disgusting. catastrophe. That's when you just. <laughs> I don't want any part of this dumb. question. Gavin, no. you need to find a better I respect it. group of friends. You need to. I respect it. You need to understand what the situation is that you're living in, and you Very need to serious. get out of there as fast now. as possible. Well. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, I respect that man's life choices. See, you see, that's the guy that told you to cheat in life too. Exactly. I didn't tell you to. I just told you how. <laughs> no, he didn't. The, <laughs> he taught you how to get caught. Is that yeah. that's how he taught you? I go to the gym the same time as this guy who like brushes his teeth and stuff there, and. uh He's clearly like well off or whatever, but when he brushes his teeth, he goes oh, like for 20 minutes. And I just gotta be like, dude, like, can you do that like once or twice? Because I'm gonna vomit if you keep doing that every morning. <laughs> Any chance you could build one of those up into one mega spin? <laughs> yeah, like, that'd be nice. Like, why why do you keep doing it? <laughs> Anyway. I don't like the people who do that in the in the sink and then just don't wash it off. They just leave it there. <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. Uh, D. Flawless says, question. You you have to pick one to wear for a full day. Wet socks or wet underwear? Ooh. Socks. 
Socks. Yeah. I think you have to go socks. Socks. Yeah. Socks. You have to pick one. Got to pick one. Yes. Well, socks it. I'm wearing wet underwear. Warm really? wet or cold wet? Cold wet. I'm gonna say. Mm. I did enough surfing in my life that wet underwear. It's it's a, it's it's an easy disguise for you. If you got to pee, you just go pee. What? <laughs> you don't have to go to the bathroom. You just go. Pope, I'm sitting in my fucking chair right smelly. here. I'm gonna Whatever. Go. You've done this enough my surfing world. in your life that this is the conclusion? <laughs> surfing. surfing. Oh, I think you said serving, <laughs> serving. like serving <laughs> food. And I was like, what is going I on? I served enough food to know that peeing in my pants is All a I'm great saying way to go. Is that I didn't realize you we were peeing in your pants. <laughs> You're 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 missing out. It is warm, it is comfortable, and it feels good. But your choice is to go with the no. Nah, That's what socks. I'm doing. It. I have my experience is that sorry, you can socks. turn that into a I good see experience. your point, Pope, in Thank California you. weather where it's beautiful and it's warm. I'm experiencing a snowstorm right now, and I think I gotta go with wet underwear because if I have wet socks on my feet, like I'm in a serious frostbite situation. You can move. Wet underwear. What about frostbite in not I, don't, I think areas. it'd be yeah. less risky. I feel like you're but more devastating. It's situational. <laughs> it's situational for sure, but here, I, my go-to is wet underwear for without a doubt. I'm going socks. Oh. Your your feet are further away from your heart, so they get less blood, so they're more likely to get frostbite than your bits that are closer to your center Thank mass. You. Your bits, yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, it, here's the thing. There is a is an amazing loophole here. Just mm. don't mm -hmm. wear to me. don't wear underwear. Don't wear oh. underwear. <laughs> oh, we go commando. We have dry you, socks you on. Not Everybody wear socks happy. also. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you, chat. Thank you. I saw flip flops. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> we wear flip flops and no underwear. <laughs> Right. No, no. If you don't, don't wear any underwear, underwear, you can still wear socks. It doesn't matter because you've already you chose one or the other. Flops, full support. I'm comfy. There you go. Comfy. Yeah. First of all, this is California. Flip -flops you're wearing swimsuit. board shorts. You're not wearing underwear. You're wearing flip flops. This is California weather. Whoever Fair. wrote this Fair. is definitely a Southern California beach dweller. <laughs> uh, dot 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 question. says, "Would you rather eat 15 pounds of crawfish with Patrick or 15 <laughs> yes. pounds of tacos from Taco Bell with Pope?" I like how he I can't I can't eat 15 there. pounds of taco. Yeah, I'm going to have to suffer through the crawfish, unfortunately. <laughs> go with the crawfish. <laughs> suffer. <laughs> Man, you so we have this place called light. Boiling Crab. <laughs> crawfish is the way to go. Do you have 15 yeah. pounds? Is that a yeah. preferred amount? Yeah, it's 15 yeah. pounds like an edible amount yeah. of crawfish. If, crawfish are small. Okay, but if you go no to this place, do you order 15 pounds of crawfish? It's still 15 pounds. It doesn't matter how big the animal is. Are we talking about 15 pounds, 15 pounds of actual meat? No. Pounds. no. It's or 15 <laughs> pounds of wait, 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 crawfish. I want, I, want to hear, I want to hear Destin from this. I want, like, the unfiltered. The crawfish don't have a lot of meat. Very, very little meat on them. You could easily eat 15 pounds of crawfish. You'd be very full, but it's editable. Uh, 15 pounds of tacos from Taco Bell? No, no. that's disgusting. <laughs> and also, it's Taco Bell. Get out of here. Also, impossible. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I think. 15, how many tacos from Taco Bell would 15 pounds be? Too many. That's how many. Well, the, the family you know, we, tacos probably oh my God, five. That's right? making me want to puke just thinking about it. First of all, so you wouldn't actually end up eating any of them because by the time you got to your 10th taco, you'd be puking that shit up. So I bet that's like 30 But it's been tacos. voted the best Mexican restaurant in America. <laughs> that's true. It has see. been voted that. Wait, wait, wait. The Taco Bell shared? I can down like a family pack myself, I think. No, it's 15. And that's 15 pound serving size. Yeah, I'm assuming yeah, no. this is your 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 share that you have to take care of. But guys, are we not going to talk about how we just found someone to verify the 15 pound myth of the crawfish that this is this is acceptable yeah, we want to hear more about this is it normal to to order 15 pounds he just confirmed no. oh wait no it's not it's, it's not, not a, no 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 sorry it would not be normal to order 15 pounds oh. of crawfish oh okay. i'm just saying mm -hmm. right. i'm sorry okay. there's not there's I'm not sorry. a lot of meat on a crawfish so yeah but you and wouldn't you go out of your way to order holes. 15 pounds you get to split it with Holtz in that scenario. How, how much would it, it be a normal Holtz, amount of single serving of crawfish would you order, Destiny? I actually, I usually don't get crawfish. I usually get king crab legs, and I usually get two and a half pounds of that, <laughs> and they are <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, or uh, like a pound of shrimp. You can easily down a pound or two of shrimp. So you don't eat the lice that, that they eat over there? 
I mean, crawfish. The crawfish, it's the whole crawfish. And you like, there's not a lot of meat on those guys. It's like, so uh, I can't you're think like of eating a, the sucking the, the meat out of a cockroach. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. seed well so, in bottom feeding yeah. cockroach. And it's yeah. delicious. So you're just <laughs> not going to go for the craw. So if presented with the option of 15 pounds of crawfish, you're like, I'd rather have a quality meat instead. That's what you're saying. Oh, I would. I would do king crab legs. I can't do 15 pounds of king crab legs, though. I can do like two. I'd love pots. to try, though. Oh, my God. I love it. Sounds you guys like Guardian Con Challenge. Crab, if you've never been to Boiling Crab near San Jose, go to Boiling Crab. Go to any crab shack. Just go get. Are I'm we going to have to do this like a Guardian Con now? Is this a I thing where you guys thing. are going to have to bring me maybe. 15 pounds of crab? Hey, I if, think so. if we're probably still talking about it in crab. January, it's February, more. March, then maybe. <laughs> We'll if see. this is we'll the see. ongoing debate of the podcast that we ask every guest to see if they want to eat 50 pounds of crawfish, I think so. Yeah. I will eat a reasonable amount of crawfish with you anytime, Holtz. Or I've never, I haven't had it before. Look, see, the thing is, when you start eating the crawfish, you also have like a beer to accompany. A company. Of course. And so a couple beers in, you're you're really hungry again. And then that, that's what that's when you're about in like the seven to eight pound range that you've already eaten. So just saying, yeah, bring out exactly that much again, please. I'm getting, I'm getting crab legs on the side. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that our tattoos are going to be like crawfish. Is that what you're saying? You want crawfish on your? No, ass? this is interesting. <laughs> it's really not. I like where this is going. I mean, because your ass is about 15 pounds. So Just picture you, you have like a crawdad yeah. holding a beer, drinking mm-hmm. on crawdad your ass. Crawdad holding a beer. All right, Holtz. Holtz crawfish okay. or that Thunderlord thing we were talking about before? Which one? Mm, yeah, one. Mm. One of the what other. What is Thunderlord dudes holding crawfish in the other? Yes. Oh, yeah. instead of a lightning bolt. Yeah. Can I just and get a crawfish? A crawfish, crawfish and a lightning, and a lightning bolt. <laughs> oh, it's a the same thing. The wielding the Thunderlord, is... please. Crawfish wielding crawfish is on the horse. Yeah, there you go. Wielding the Thunderlord. This is gold, man. How could you not want to do this we tomorrow? We are designing epic proportions right now. I just heard oh. epic proportions in my brain go off like lightning, <laughs> you know, thunder, <laughs> explosions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, got quiet. That's weird. I think Ash is going to have some serious design ideas. Ash, for, if you're uh, listening, you don't have to draw any of this. We're going with the fucking half heart with us. Hey, if you want to draw an awesome crawfish, <laughs> Thunderlord action, maybe we can use it. Yeah, yeah, if you want to draw that, please. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> maybe we can make a shirt. All right. That, that's a that's next DCP shirt right there. <laughs> it is. 15 pounds, baby. I want a single crawfish standing upon a mound of corpses of crawfish, wielding and the lightning bolt and thunder. The Saint Lord. Fourteen of crawfish. Yes. Breaking That's news: good. Tavos oh, wow. says if you ordered fifteen pounds of crawfish, the most you're going to eat is like three pounds of actual meat. The rest is shell. This is correct. Okay. I will say no, though, bomb. three Ooh. pounds of meat Whoops. is still. Like if, but it's hefty you get to share in that scenario. No, 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 no. no, this, no, is, no, this, no. Is this is still fine. Portion. This is what you eat. It. Yeah, that's fine. Like, are you gonna go eat a three pound burger? A Can I do steak? I mean, so when like, you add in fries with the burger. No, 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 no. This is the meat. Like a pound. You're and not a half finishing burger. a three pound steak, sir. <laughs> How many challenges are we gonna come up with here? No, first of the, all, the discussion was: not Is it three normal? pounds of anything all right. at one is sitting? There a it wasn't. Limit? Could you do it? Is it? Would you plan <laughs> on doing that shout? weekly? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <gasps> weekly? Did you just say I can't eat three pounds of king crab legs in one sitting? <laughs> I bet you could. Are you gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna I have king cribs, king crabs? Maybe I should have three pounds of meat of that. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. be like, huh? It's Saturday night. I think it's time to have three pounds of crawfish meat. I get two and a half pounds of king crab legs when I go to king crab. No, no, we're talking so about I the actual. Easily up at the three. We're talking about meat. the actual meat, though, because yeah, if, I, if I, fifteen yes. pounds gets condensed yep. to three pounds of actual meat, three pounds is still quite a bit of food. If I get like a sixteen ounce steak, I am like, oh, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Dude, we're talking 48 ounces. Bingo. I'll do three pounds of king crab legs. The meat. Oh, wait, no. Maybe you're right. Because the shell is pretty <laughs> heavy. If you're eating three pounds of steak, you know. No. 
How much three steak pounds of steak, steak fit mignon? inside a gallon container for milk? <laughs> <laughs> what is the volume of three pounds of meat? <laughs> uh, so do you put a milk sixteen ounce steak on? is one pound? So, so do you sixteen times three? Do, do you put the milk in, on the steak first, or do you take a bite of the steak and then drink milk? What do you do? <laughs> That's a question. Yeah. I have actually. <laughs> oh my god! All right. So, Please, Lord, a, no. a filet mignon. A filet mignon is half a pound. So, it's about, yeah, it's typically about an eight ounce, eight ounce cut. So, six filet mignons. Yeah, is three pounds. Jesus, Christ. three pounds is a lot of meat, guys. I, I'm surprised. It's a lot of meat. None of you guys are like a meat. Well, I mean, not not none. Like some of you guys are not immediately like whoa. Like imagine getting a three pound hamburger. No, I think you could do it. You just would be very uncomfortable after you did it. Yeah, I'm not saying you can't. I'm so hungry now. It's just <laughs> you right. are not doing well, anything else for the rest of that day. I'm I'm all for a three pound, you know, crawdad. Really, and tomorrow is looking busy tomorrow too. <laughs> tattoo on my ass. That's what I'm gonna get. Crawdad tattoos on your ass. I like it. Let's get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we gotta do. I think that's madness. it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you want to find more of me, I am at Alton underscore YT on Twitter, where um, I, yeah, it's it's fine to eat that much crawfish. Fight me. Change my mind. <laughs> uh, who goes next? Is it me? How about Destin? <laughs> Destin, yeah. I don't know. Let's just shake it up. <laughs> Let's, yeah. Hey, I work at IGN. We do video game stuff over there. You can go check that out. Awesome. Uh, IGN, you say, eh? Mm. Yeah, I did uh, you say. Yeah. So we do the we do the shorter Destiny show. We do Fire Team Chat over there. These guys have the fantastic uh, DCP. Had a ton of fun tonight. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for coming. Uh, on. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have Dado on on Friday. He's gonna join us. And uh, nice. It, we got to get some of you guys on the show. We still haven't had Watts on the show. I don't think we've gotten Briar on the show. Uh, Tefty, you're supposed to come by the I office, know. bro. I think that that's what Tefty's got to be there. In I want to. I want to yeah. actually visit and be there in person. And I think that's part of the barrier that's been happening, like making that schedule work to like drive over to San Francisco. So I would love it's to be on the show. Dude, I'll tell you what. You 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 make your way over here. You got a place to stay here. Wake up in the morning. You take a. I don't think I could a, ever go over there now. You take a. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> the day, and then you're there. You don't know until you live in the Bay Area. If you're in the East Bay and there's a thing in the city, you might as well be in freaking Antarctica. Yeah. Because it's no, so man. difficult to get around. No, you, there, you it, the track. You, it's a I challenge. live in Alameda. You but you you jump on the ferry, you're the ten minutes, oh, man. Come Al- on. Alameda's pretty dope. Yeah. I uh San Francisco's nice. I would we'd I'd love to combine. Hang out, be on the show. It'd be fun. In- invite stands uh, for all of you, actually. And then, yeah, the personal stream thing. It's over at twitch.tv slash the Destin channel. If you want to check that out. <laughs> what? Um, I saw the Hobbit hole. <laughs> Jets go to San Fran, stay in Pope's Hobbit hole. <laughs> it's it's a different Hobbit hole. Just really. I live in a, I live in a <laughs> four bedroom Victorian. I don't know what you guys are talking about. This thing's beautiful. Um, it would be awesome. Uh, I am Tefty Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. You can catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. Recently, we've been playing uh, Hitman and uh, chucking briefcases around the corner. It's nice. been it's been fun. It's been good, good stuff. I'm Bri Rabbit, and my wife is yelling at me for being too loud. <laughs> you can find me at the Briar Rabbit on Twitter. We're streaming on Twitch occasionally. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just search for Miss 5000 Watts. Is that everyone? Yeah. Hi. What? You're oh. next. I, I went first. <laughs> you threw. Why did you go first? Because I always go first. He goes first <laughs> to end it. Whatever. Just a heads up this is Pope Bear. You can find me on Twitter at Pope Bear. Yeah. Make sure to follow the podcast at DCP underscore live. If you're listening to this right now, <laughs> hit the like button. Yeah. Hit the follow smash, button. Smash the like button. You know, we, get, button, we, get like, we get like we get like thirty thousand plus like views on our YouTube channel and we have like you know, just hit the follow button. Go ahead, do it. It doesn't hurt hurt. And then uh um th- next week we don't have a guest. <laughs> 
next week we don't have a guest. We're uh, uh Wait, I think we didn't decide on when. Yeah, I thought <laughs> next week is Thanksgiving and we're not That's having it. a guest and we're not doing a podcast. We're not doing we're a not. show. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be a guest because there's, no there's no guest. No There's show. no podcast, no show. We've decided that our lives are too important. Three now. pounds um, of turkey meat. That's what has will, to be consumed. This will be the first time in a long time we've ever missed a week. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to have Carolina Gamer on. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We're going to oh, have, cool. then we're, we're going to start off with uh, the, in December, we have Geek Chick, Laced Up Lauren, Ninja, and, uh, um, we're going to then do a Christmas special, a holiday special on the 27th. Mm. You are not going to miss. You're not going to want to miss that show. Ash is going to be joining us for the first time. And um, we're going to be in costume. We're going to draw, draw, draw her. We're going to draw her. Oh, don't do that. Uh, um, I think we should totally we should make the uh, the art for that one. Like the, we should. The, we should, we should have Ash take a take a week off, and we'll make yeah, we make the art for it. That's we're hilarious. Gonna, we're gonna make her draw herself. That's that's what. We're gonna do. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, just make sure that you guys uh, um, stay tuned. We've got lots of stuff happening. Um, we really appreciate everybody on Patreon who's supporting us. It's beyond awesome. Every follow, every every uh, subscription we get on um, Twitch really helps us out. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Just. Love you guys. Thanks, Thanks for guys. watching, guys. Really appreciate it. This we're gonna we're gonna roll credits and be back to read out some subs. Bye. Bye. Oh, hit my microphone. You can start. <laughs>